Hello, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Uh, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five green, five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That is athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Also, Viore. Thank you to Viore for sponsoring Nate Land. We all got some of the new fall collection. Uh, we do love it. Uh, get yourself some of those comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioriclothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. And Solo Stove. Upgrade your backyard with a Solo Stove fire pit. Get up to 30% on fire pits right now and use promo code Nate for an extra $10 off. Go to solostove.com and get $10 off with code Nate. Big thank you to Babbel. Babbel's immersive language learning lessons were created by over 100 experts in the field, not by a robot, by a real person. Mm -hmm. Learn to speak like a local and choose from 14 different languages. When you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription with promo code Nate, you'll get an additional three months for free. Go to B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code Nate. Welcome, folks. Hello, folks. I'm Nate Bargetzi, Brian Bates. Aaron Weber. Uh, welcome, you know. This is it. Wait, Aaron, you were it. Yeah, man. Yeah. It felt good. It felt honestly. good. Yeah. yeah. We just lost them as a uh, ad. Uh, they... <laughs> What did you? Yeah, they <laughs> just they we go. didn't sign up for this. <clears throat> they just crumbled it up and they go, "Who is that?" <laughs> uh, you're you're uh, putting an ad on Aaron Land. <laughs> they dropped us weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> We're just letting you read it. Yeah, yeah. make you feel good. <laughs> We're just giving you something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I contribute something. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. Welcome everybody. We're uh, we're back here. We're in it, doing it, trying to think. I mean, I guess we have. Yeah, I was on the road. Everybody's on the road. No, I was at Nissan Stadium. Oh yeah, Titans. Ugh, man. man, it's pretty frustrating. They all hurt, but this one really hurt. This really yeah. hurt. It really. I was like trying to think about. I was like, I was almost thinking like, well, if I was a Packers fan, it would hurt worse. Like I was like trying to make myself feel better. Yeah. And you're like, well, if you're the Packers, I mean, that's brutal, mm-hmm. brutal, because you don't know if he's even coming back, Aaron Rodgers, yeah, and like, yeah. so like. I was like trying to be like, well, at least yeah. we're one less than that. Of, but we, but I mean, we, it's, it's, it, it's, it's tough. It I, hurts. I try to tell myself that too. I've had season tickets ever since they've been there. Yeah. And I think this is our last year. Oh yeah. Just because I'm on the road so much. I miss a lot of games yeah. and now we're having a baby when I am home. Yeah. I probably shouldn't be at a game. Yeah. yeah. You're getting swarmed by fans at your seats. Like it's yeah. become yeah, a, it's big, become a yeah. big problem. Those seats going there. People want to notice when those pop you know, and those <laughs> pop open. I got a lot of who days comments yeah. sent to me and stuff from people, either fans or people just messing with me. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't really like that. Yeah. yeah. The Bengals. Kind of yeah. mean. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, there was a, uh, I saw some, I got some of those. Too. I mean, it was, it was crazy. The playoffs were unreal. Yesterday was, I mean, two of the greatest games I've ever seen in my life. Oh, every game was great. Every game was unreal. Uh huh. The first three all ended the exact same way. Yeah. Four seconds left. Yeah, full goal to end the game. Can I ask you? I, I have a sports theory question. Icing a kicker, everybody does it. Happened in the Titans game. Icing a kicker. If there's a last second field goal. You call a timeout, evidently just to get in their head and make them think about it. But it happens so often now. Wouldn't you? Could you ice the kicker by not icing them? Uh, you know what I mean. If you're I expecting you a timeout, yeah, I agree. I think you would do that. But didn't the Titans have one timeout left? Hmm. So in a way, they kind of maybe did do that. He's thinking, are they going to call it or not? I don't think you can talk, call back-to-back timeouts like that, though. Oh, I thought you could. I think mentally, they're you know they're not children out there, and they're uh, <laughs> yeah. it's a professional. At athlete that level, I agree. That can, that, but I mean, yeah. I agree that you could try to mix something up and be like, all right, what if we do? What if we don't? I, I do think that, but it's. You know, but I also think they can. They know how to focus. Especially that guy is so good. That yeah. guy is unbelievable. The Bengals kicker. Yeah, yeah. I, there's a lot of talk now about the overtime rule after the way the Bills game ended. Yeah, I was. I threw this out on social media a few weeks ago. No one replied. No one cared. <laughs> but now I'm throwing it to you guys. There's 10 minutes in an NFL overtime game. What happens if a team puts together a 10 minute 
drive that ends in a field goal with no time left? What do you do know. then? I don't know. I think that's the ball game, right? The other team? Probably because it's the end of the game. So if you took the time away. Yeah, but the rule is if you only kick a field goal, the other team You're gets guaranteed possession. another possession. So they get an untimed possession maybe? Yeah. But then that's – even untimed doesn't seem fair. Yeah. Yeah, then they have an advantage. Interesting. I don't know. The Titans had I, a. I could see why you didn't get a lot of responses the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Titans had a over ten minute drive uh, earlier this season that ended in a field goal. Oh, okay. During a game, Maybe, so it's possible. Yeah, I mean, it rarely happens, but it does happen. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's for an NFL podcast. Maybe just, <laughs> the NFL just goes. I don't know. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know where to go after that, you know? Well, it it hurt. Yeah. You didn't look it up to see? I tried to, and I couldn't find And I, are you talking about the overtime thing? Yeah. And I tweeted it to a couple of Titan sports writers, uh-huh. and they never replied. Yeah. I don't think anyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to answer it. Yeah. What I've does stumped happen? everyone. Yeah. yeah. That is true. What if you found something that no one knows? You yeah. found a loophole, yeah. You man. found a loophole that Roger DeGell is like, we got to shut this guy up, <laughs> you know? I just disappeared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Newman with that bucket over yeah, my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't ask these questions. You already got your preds? You see, you already switched? I've already got to move on. <laughs> yeah. I was like, because I already prepared to wear my new Titans. Yeah. Know, and I was like, all right, yeah. got to wear preds. Got to wear preds now. When we were leaving the stadium, somebody started chanting, let's go Predators. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Just, yeah. Yeah. Preds are doing great. Yeah. Got to yeah. move on. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope, I mean, if you're a Bengals fan, then congratulations. I am pulling for the Bengals now. Uh, I have a heart. I don't know who I, I, I wanted Tom Brady. Got a rod in here. I was like, that was brutal. Uh, so, but that's gone. And so, yeah, I don't know. I don't mind Matthew Stafford. I kind of root for him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, being, yeah, I don't know. I try to think like who, it's, it's not as like crazy. Uh, you have close friends, Dan Soder. 49ers yeah, Niners. Niners with Soder. Eric Stone Street. Eric Chiefs. Stone Street Chiefs. Chiefs are winning though. Like yeah. they're like dominant. So it's hard to kind of be like it's hard to when you when your team's not in hard to throw to like I your know. buddy's team that's like, well, you're the best team. I right? agree. So uh Soder with the Niners. I know how excited he was. Mm-hmm. Uh so that's very that's very cool. So I, I'm I'm rooting for uh, you know I hope him I just hope the the games are good you know mm. that's how I feel there's a tremendous amount of relief now yeah where you can just I can just enjoy the games yeah, yeah. everyone says the winner of the Bills Chiefs will kill the Bengals yeah and maybe that'll happen but if you're a Bengals fan that game Bills Chiefs is exactly what you want yeah I just knock out drag out overtime yeah. everyone's calling it the greatest game ever yeah. it's almost like a Super Bowl and then. You know, now they got to regroup and. Yeah, I mean, it was an unbelievable. I mean, watching it like we were, I was, it just, it couldn't even. I don't know. It's the craziest game I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, sports section. <laughs> we'll be right back with. That's what we kept doing. Uh, Mike Vecchione, Greg Stone. Uh, they have a podcast, uh, Macaroni Rascals, I believe. Yeah. But I think it's Greg on their podcast, so we would do it on the bus. It's very funny. He goes, all right, we'll be back with uh, uh, Third Eye Blind. <laughs> just anybody, but you do it like if anybody's saying anything, you uh-huh. just yeah. go like, oh, that's interesting. All right, everybody, we'll be right back with Third Eye Blind <laughs> or something like that. Uh, it was funnier on the bus. Uh, Sam Hoffman, the smartest guy on the podcast, thinks corn grows on trees. Ooh. The nicest comedian in the world. Relentlessly makes fun of Brent's health and well being. <laughs> Brent gives all the listeners information on viewing an asteroid that had passed before the podcast even aired. <laughs> Everyone decides that now, 82 weeks in, is a good time to switch up the format of the podcast <laughs> to change the structure to aimless rambling and then complaining about the aimless rambling. <laughs> and then top it all off, we get a story about a story that someone else told about Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> On a different podcast. What a show, folks. <laughs> that is when you break it down like that. And I mean, I just went in. I just did something that was also on another podcast. Well, we're back to the old format, so I hope you're happy. <laughs> that didn't last long. It's a man. very good summary. In my head, it made sense. It was like, I think universe scared me for some reason. The universe episode. Like, it felt like very like, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. 
you know. It was literally the broadest topic possible. The broadest. And then maybe I don't want everybody to know how dumb I am. Yeah. Like, so it's like, sometimes you're like, well. That cat might be out of that bag. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. But we're back. We're back. We're back, folks. Uh, back to the 82 weeks in. You know? You just always see what happens. That's how you're never going to get here. Someone gonna... suggested that. They're like, change the format every week. Yeah. We just like to watch the train wreck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Silver hair thrifter. I am Canadian, and it's pronounced toque, as in fluke, toque, fluke. A toke is something else involving cannabis. We uh, really doubled down on freaking Canadians out. First, I know. we call it a toboggan, and they lost their mind. Yeah. And then we try to correct it and call it toke. I don't know if we've ever gotten more comments from people. Let yeah, us know. toke. Toke. So now, it, yeah, in yeah. my defense, I even looked this up. Ahead of time, I went to Merriam-Webster Dictionary online, and they pronounced it toke. Yeah. But I guess that's one of the things that's changed. Well, what do they know? You know? Yeah. Just a dictionary. It's spelled T-O. Maybe they, don't do, they don't do Canada's. Do they do just America's <laughs> dictionary? Does Canada have its own? Maybe. Yeah. Is Merriam, is it, who Mer- is the Merriam-Webster? Yeah. I, I, is that a person? I think it's probably two. Yeah. Miriam and Webster? I think so. Yeah, Daniel know. Webster is one guy. I know that's a real person. I don't know who Miriam And they made is. the... Could you look that up? They just decided they just got together. And they said, I'm going to do a dictionary. Like, it is. Like, who... who like Who decides it? It's all yeah, arbitrary. It's Canada. Like, well, we got our own. You know? I'm sure they got tired by the time they got to Toke. They go, I don't care. Yeah. I bet I could see them both in there. And he goes, all right, uh, we're on... Uh, he goes, all right, T-O-Q-E. He's writing the dictionary down. He goes to Webster. He goes, what do you want to say? He goes, I don't toke. I don't, I, I, how long is this? He goes, well, we're only on T. We have a lot left. They're having to do it every word in the, and then maybe he said, you sure it's not toke? He goes, I don't, I don't care at all. <laughs> at this point, we're in the T's. At, we're in the T's. <laughs> toke, put whatever you want. He goes, all right, man, you want to call a Canadian? And he goes, I don't, I'm not, I don't want anybody involved. I don't, I should never agree to this. Are we making money from this? <laughs> or like, I don't even. We, there's, it was fun when we were on C, yeah. but now we're on T. Yeah, this is like, ridiculous. Yeah, it was founded by uh, George Merriam back in 1831. He's like, wow. let's, let's get a dictionary going. No, we need a dictionary. Can you imagine just. You can't tell if it's like, is life that easy? You know, is life that uh, not easy, uncomplicated, that when you got ideas, you go, you know what? We should put all the words together in a book. And someone goes, that's a good idea. Nobody ever thought to do no that. No one ever thought to put all the words in a book. Like now, you you're you got to think of like the craziest stuff in the world to be different. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, what if we did, what if we just said all the words? And you have to define them, each one. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get, how do they do it? I guess they just... <laughs> they take turns. Yeah. Your turn, Webster. Yeah, how would they have done Yeah, so Webster, this is uh, Noah Webster. My bad, not Daniel Webster. Oh. I imagine they're in the same family, though. Mm. Uh, He learned 26 languages. He hoped to standardize American speech, since Americans in different parts of the country use somewhat different vocabularies and spelled, pronounced, and used words differently. So I imagine this was a nightmare. Every part of the country spelling words different. And he's like, let's just all get on the same page here. And this guy kind of came in. We just went with this guy. Now, a chef's hat is also spelled T-O-Q-U-E, and I think that is pronounced toque. A chef's hat in yeah. Canada or here? Well, I thought everywhere, but here. So it was spelled T-O-Q-U-E, and in my head, I think that can be toque or it can be toque. And I should have known, since it's Canadian, it would be the more ridiculous sounding of the two. So my bad. A lot. Well, that'll help. A lot of people... <laughs> uh, <laughs> tried to explain it to us by saying it's like two with a K on the end. Yeah. So I so wanted just to mess with them one more week and say, okay, so it's 2K. 2K. <laughs> and just call it 2K it's the whole 2K. show. Uh, NBA all right. 2K. So it's Tuke. Webster, Merriam. Yeah. I mean, there's no other dictionary either, is there? I think there are some others. Some this, other. this is the gold standard, though. Yeah. I mean, we you could just make your own. If there's others, then I'll just we're, we'll do a Nayland dictionary. We can copy the straight up copy that. What's like, stopping us? I don't know. Let's do it. We just have our own. So what's Britannica? Is that encyclopedias? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They bought 
Merriam Webster. They own it. Oh, they do? Yeah, they have a monopoly on knowledge. Oh. Mm. And then they were like, well, what do you do? They go, well, we talk about it. We just talk about stuff a lot longer. Is that what they said? Like, they go, <laughs> you go, you like say what a boat is. We're like, we got a story about a boat. <laughs> we're, we dive in. We dive, yeah, we get it's a whole thing you're like oh okay that's cool man that's that's all there at the head is right is that that's an encyclopedia it's yeah, a little yeah. bit longer drawn yeah, yeah, yeah. out dictionary they get into it they get into it yeah it explains what things are yeah all right uh travis white the fact that aaron said tony robbins instead of tim robbins as the actor in shawshank redemption is absolutely phenomenal could you imagine what a different movie that would have been if Tony Robbins was cast in that movie? Wow. Wow. It would have been somehow even more inspirational. I didn't even like. catch, because that was the first one you mentioned of people you wanted to meet. So I really just thought you were a big Tony Robbins fan. I think I thought you, I was thinking Tony Robbins when you said it. Yeah. And then I just never paid attention after that. Because you I said heard Tony you were Robbins. and I didn't like. Yeah, yeah, I did too. You said Tony Robbins, Morgan Freeman, and then the Warden. Right. Yeah. And I'm just, I didn't catch on. You were trying to say Tim Robbins. Well, those are, the, in fairness, those are the only two Robbins ever. So it's a pretty yeah. easy mix up, I think. Marty Robbins. You should say, I no, that. that's what I meant. I meant Tony Robbins and <laughs> uh, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and then Morgan and Tim show up, and you go, no, 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 no. I wanted Tony. <laughs> yeah. And they go, are you sure? I mean, we thought for sure you just messed up. And you go, I, I said Tony Robbins, didn't I? <laughs> the warden can stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob Gunn. Another one that gets people get uh, furious. Never seen Shawshank. Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about oh, that. Oh, yeah. All right. Still haven't. <laughs> I need to watch it. I'll watch it. I'll watch it in one of my night movies. Yeah. I'm going back to Sopranos right now. Started doing that again. You can read the book, Shawshank Redemption book. Oh. It's a novella. It's like 30 pages. You can knock it out. Really? Yeah. What's a novella? Like a short novel. Stephen King. Stephen King put out of four novellas at once. It was Stand By Me was one of them. Shawshank Redemption was another one. And there are two other that have been made into movies, too. And they weren't horror either? Because most of these are horror. No. Somebody two- was like, I, I read somewhere, somebody was like, you can only write horror horror books. And he was like, no, I can do other stuff. And he yeah. wrote those, mm. wow. which are like two of the greatest movies ever yeah. came out of it. Pretty crazy. Why don't they just do more books like that if it works out so well? Short books. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's fifty percent going to be the greatest thing that people talk about for the history of ever. Uh-huh. <laughs> so why would they not just be like? I mean, we got a pretty good thing going here with these short books. Yeah, just yeah. put out four, and two of them could be great. Yeah, instead of one long boring yeah. one. <laughs> Drags on and on. Ross Christensen. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Ross. Christensen. You're proud of yourself. Well, I stopped. I stopped and looked around before I got to the end of that. <laughs> Can we officially drop Aaron's moniker as the smart one? He had to ask Beanstalk what blood pressure is, and he had no idea that corn is harvested completely with the stalk. Stalk. He also referred to the Field of Dreams town as Dyersburg instead of Dyersville. Ooh. There's a helpful saying in the Midwest: a good corn crop should be knee high by the Fourth of July. This is likely why they play the Field of Dreams game in August. And Not in February. Yeah, see, this is one of those things. Ross, I feel like, you know, you're talking a lot of smack here, but if Ross were cornered and somebody said, what is blood pressure? Do you think this guy could explain very well pressure, what blood you, pressure is? You go pressure of the blood. And then I would think the person asking would go, okay, I guess that's right. It's kind of what happened last week. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me. I think that yeah. blood pressure probably feels like one that you just say the word back to them and then they go, yeah, I guess that is. It's like <laughs> kind of self-descriptive, I <laughs> yeah. guess. You know, you press the blood. It's the br- It's the pressure of the blood. And then you go, okay. <laughs> also, corn, not a big part of my life. You know, it's But just, a lot of people point out, you went to Notre Dame, you drove past it. We didn't have corn at Notre Dame, you know? But to even get to Notre Dame, I just think they would. you would know stuff like this, though. Did you always just fly there? No, I drove there every time. You Is never it passed a there and back? What if it's because you're you just come from such a like high net family <laughs> that y'all don't even yeah y'all would never even talk about like what the people right the people are the ones that are doing the corn. That's what the peasants are doing. The peasants are doing. Mm-hmm. You're eating. The, you're like I don't. I've never. I'm sorry, I've never seen it grown. Mm-hmm. I can tell you. Uh, you know, it gets brought to my table by a servant. Brought, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. The Weber <laughs> filled. You have your own filled dreams. 
There's a helpful saying in the Midwest, a good corn crop. You're like, yeah, oh, well, my guy that worked for me, yeah, that he loved that saying. I never <laughs> I never heard it. Uh, Mandy McKnight. If that was a co- competition to see who should read ads, Aaron came in first place. Lots of enthusiasm. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That feels good. Yeah, good job. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> Justin Ratliff almost got choked at Nate's reaction to Brian talking about getting kicked at the water fountain. <laughs> you could tell he thought everyone had the same experience growing up. I'm dying at the idea that the water fountain was like the wild west for Brian. <laughs> the wild west for Brian. <laughs> that is very, like, just... You just like <laughs> you holding off your thirst of going like I don't know if I should do it today. Someone pointed out that uh, Gary Goldman has a joke in one of his specials about getting kicked at the water fountain. Oh, as really? A kid. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. We're, we're about the same age, so I guess yeah. it was a, a '80s thing. Yeah, y'all just got kicked. <laughs> <laughs> you were just in the the last big run of water fountain. I guess that we I, I used water fountains a lot too, but you were. I could see when I was using water fountains, I could see them being on their way out. You were in the thick of it. Yeah. Well, I don't think water fountains are out. They're, I mean, they're, no one's really using them now. Yeah. They don't use them at schools? Uh, we're saying is you, y'all are probably impressed by the technology still. You I know, think that's how y'all got water. It. I mean, you were yeah. getting it from a well. It's like, I think it was like, yeah, you was, it was like science. My family did. Yeah. Yeah. Your family got water from a well? We didn't have city water growing up. Are you kidding Out me? in the country. Yeah. And... So we had a well, and sometimes, like in the summertime, if it was a real drought, yeah, we uh, we wouldn't flush every time. <laughs> oh wow! Did you ever have to? You had to go out there and crank it up and get some water. No, I mean it. It flowed just like normal through your okay. through your pipes, but it came from a well. Yeah, and my mom would fill up water jugs at work of good drinking water. Yeah, so we wouldn't have to drink. drink yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what you're definitely getting kicked at the water. I mean, like you're you're probably looking at it too long. Yeah. You're so blown away by fresh it. Fresh water. Going, like, Mama, today at school, you turn this knob and this water comes out. I swear. I ain't never seen nothing like that. Look <laughs> at this. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh Izzy Warts. I now think Nate may have ADHD. Not dyslexia. Oh, man. Both. Oh. I say this after him talking about the way he has trouble retaining what he sees in movies or shows. As someone with ADHD, I started putting the pieces together from my own experiences, particularly the way he will lose interest in lots of topics he's not directly interested in. <laughs> but I think the way he talks could just be because his brain and mouth are not working at the same speed. <laughs> it's something I experienced and was even sent to speech therapy for as a child. Wow. Look at that. That could be so now no dyslexia. Which would you rather it be? If you had to pick. Uh I don't know. Is it all just a wash now? It's just, yeah, it's all Maybe you have seen Shawshank. Maybe. You watched There's it last been, night. Uh yeah. You know what's funny is I was with uh I was talking about the AT, ADHD uh with uh, uh Julian McCullough, who's with me this week, who's with me this past weekend. But we were talking about it. It's like, yeah, it's like how you like you you get it is like your brain's faster than you actually can say. So when I'm reading, I'm reading super fast, but then my mouth. I guess you start and stop a lot of sentences. Yeah. So because you're thinking ahead to the next thing, the yeah. next thing. Yeah. Hmm. So what do you do? Nothing. Just deal with it. Well, you're a genius, maybe. Uh, maybe. I your, can't ma- your mouth's not. My mouth is like. <laughs> every day, it's like sits in the bed, just tired, just hoping. <laughs> Just wants a break, and then I just lay in bed, can't go to sleep. My brain's like, I got a good idea. <laughs> My mouth is like, go to bed. <laughs> I'm a family physician. Uh, Dr. Bernard Elpidus. Elpidus. Elpidus, maybe? Yeah. Elpidus. I'm a family physician. Triage is a medical term to assign urgency to patients. For example, a patient with chest pain will take priority over a patient with a runny nose. I like that Nate thought it meant the third time coming in. That actually makes sense. <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah. 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 Here we go again. Every time he comes in. <laughs> Got a triage. This guy won't leave. Jake Kraft. Uh, I completely understand the level of anger Nate felt while watching that Hall- Hallmark movie. I got so irrationally mad at Nate's inability to understand the Taco Bell membership. 
you would not be required to only order one taco at a time. You would be able to go and add one free taco to whatever else you were ordering. For instance, I like to order number six with a large Baja Blast and also the free taco that my membership allows me to get. The way he is only able to understand this is I'm only allowed to order one taco is baffling to me. I would expect more out of a fast food aficionado such as yourself. I think I gave up on some of those middle. Aficionado. Aficionado? Aficionado. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, I think I, I, I think I kind of meant what he's saying. Maybe it wasn't coming out again. I think we have ADHD and not dyslexia. We just found out from Izzy. Uh, so I think I'm ahead of the game, Jake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that being your understanding of it. No, I think, yeah, I think you got it. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, it wasn't like you could go in. That would be very funny. It would be hilarious if you go, I'm starving. I would like one taco. Then you have to go stand at the end of the line. You come back. I'll take a number six with Baja Blast. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be, I would do it because that's hilarious that Taco Bell made you do that. How much is a taco? taco I mean, it's got to be a dollar. A dollar. Yeah, a dollar so you'd have 40. To, if that. You'd have to eat 10. 10 times. To- 10 times. It makes, it's not a good, it's not a good system. I agree. That doesn't make sense. One free, you're, you're just your time alone. I mean, I'm saying, unless you are, you go, I eat Taco Bell every day. And then it's going to save you. If you would have to get a free taco every day. So 30 days, you'd have to get a free taco. And then it'd be where it'd save you 20 some dollars, maybe 30 some dollars. So would you pay the 30 bucks just to, you know, $10 a month? Yeah. Yeah. So like, are we, yeah, like, yes, yeah, so you're saving 20, yeah, 20 bucks. So like, are you going to, is it worth saving 20 bucks to have to go <laughs> eat taco to make sure like, a couple of people suggested just buy one and give it to the homeless, and then every day they go in there and get a taco. That's, that's not, not bad. bad. I don't yeah. think Taco Bell. That's what they're hoping for. <laughs> no, but uh, that's a good. That's in a your good face, idea. Taco Bell. Yeah, here's a free. That's not a bad idea. Here you go. Here's a free thing. You can get free taco every day. Yeah, one free taco. You're giving them a fishing pole give instead of a fish. fish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't know how because <laughs> you're not teaching them. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Right. That's you're, what I'm saying. You're giving yeah, them yeah, a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're doing the opposite. <laughs> what are you talking about? I think getting them a job at Taco Bell would be the fishing pole. I think you're just getting them a free taco every day. Is, you're basically like, come here every day, I'll give you a fish. You're giving them the means to have a meal every day. That's what you're doing. I know. The one taco every yeah. day. <laughs> and the, I know. It's not a good fishing pole, but it's... It'll... That's not a fishing pole. I think That's it a is, fish. man. You're giving them the fish. I'm giving them a fish every hey, day. Hey, come right here to this bank. I catch fish every day. I'll give you a fish to eat. And then he goes, okay. And then the point of it is to be a fishing pole is like the means to like then go get. It's not like he goes, you know, I started getting this free taco. Now I work for Wall Street. <laughs> and I really just snowballed from there. Like it wouldn't. That's getting, you know, unless you go there so often that they're like, what if you work here? <laughs> Maybe that's the, you know. Yeah. Taco Bell goes. You know, I see you in here every day. <laughs> Dorito Locos Taco. And they're That's like, why don't you just work for us? And they're like, why would I? I get free food. Why? I already no have reason. a fishing pole, dude. Yeah. My employee discount is <laughs> not even as good as this. <laughs> but if he, get, if he works there, then he gets a job and he probably gets a free meal. And, the, and then he goes, when yeah. he gets his employee free meal, I'll also take one extra taco. That's a fishing pole. The job. The job. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. I want to give an update on another thing from last week. The woman on Jeopardy. She's mm. now tied for second. Oh, nice. 38 wins. Uh, what's his name? Ken Jennings at 74. But one of the previous winners wrote an op-ed this week, kind of controversial. Oh. He says you should go back to the old rules where after five wins, you're out. But that was, I guess, the way they used to do it. Oh, really? Because he says it's such an unfair advantage once you on there a few times to the winner because you're cu- you're really nervous the first time. You don't know how the buzzer works. He, he said it's just so much advantage once you've on the show a few times. That it's not fair that somebody's been on there 30 times. Somebody else is on there the first time. So he thinks he needs to, after five weeks, move on. This get all new contestants. That's soft. So uh, what did Ken Jennings do? Ken, he didn't, did he have to leave? He didn't have to leave. He finally lost after 74 weeks. Yeah. So they're saying even like Ken Jennings shouldn't have that record. Yeah, the guy just said, 
it, once you get to a certain amount of wins, it's so unfair for that person because they're so much more comfortable and set than the yeah. two people that it, the show would be better. He said, after five wins, let's just start over. It's just someone time. writing an article for nothing. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, yeah. It's the only time anybody cares about Jeopardy is when somebody's on a streak like this. That's what we need to go back to, like, people making dictionaries. Like, that was a time where, like, he was at least bringing, like, the people just write stuff now that's, like, they write, you know, like, what are you? I think this was in the Atlantic. But, like, why? Well, the Atlantic was very nice to me. But <laughs> they, the nicest comedian. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm making fun of them now. Well, I didn't agree with that article either, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like anything uh, the Atlantic wrote. <laughs> There, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like almost you just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, she's halfway there to catch Ken Jennings, yeah. but he shouldn't be doing it back to five way. Why would you write the article about Ken Jennings though? Like, why would you not? I guess I think he didn't they've think had, about it. I think he was the first really streaky winner, but yeah. now they've had a bunch of people have won yeah. on really long streaks. And the guy who wrote it said, Jeopardy's not as good this way. Yeah, but it doesn't. But I mean, how many streaks have we had? And the fact that it's been, she's not. She's. I mean, she's not even. She's almost half, or she's a little above half. She's at thirty eight. So she, yeah, she's yeah. basically at half. So like, I mean, she's still got a long way to go. Yeah. So if if they can't do it, then you're like, well, like it would be one thing if they're if it's all like thirty eight, forty, mm. and like everybody's kind of doing it. Other than that, they're like people are not doing it. I think more people will watch a streak than they will go in to watch Jeopardy every day. Yeah, I think you're more. Uh, we're talking about Jeopardy mm-hmm. now, versus if you don't have this happen, you could be like, "Oh, I, didn't, I thought Jeopardy was off the air." <laughs> right. yeah. Didn't he die, Alex? Like, yeah. so who's yeah. doing it now? Ken Jennings and Blossom, because I can't ever say her name. Oh. Or like splitting it. I think. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you need this streak. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it, the show would be gone. I think. Uh, yeah. I think I Jeopardy's agree. been doing really well for a long time. I don't think I need you to. Alex Trebek, I know, but Alex Trebek is the, you know, it's like these shows do well for a long time with like, the they have a person there that's, that's like been there forever. Like it's, it's that's why they're, you, you know what it is. Yeah, it's the uh, shows, it's a simple idea. You can have it on every day. I, I'm not making fun of Jeopardy. Yeah. But I think the streak gets you talking about it. I don't think we'd be talking about it. That's true. Yeah, we're saying they're doing it right. You know, I know, but you guys working. are you guys are saying that this show needs it, and I'm like, well, Jeopardy's been doing pretty well for a long time because of things like this. Yeah, but they haven't been. I think the majority of Jeopardy's run it probably has been five wins, and you're and you're out. At the but that is so long ago that Ken Jennings. I mean, how long ago was the Ken Jennings thing? Twenty years ago, close to it. So for twenty years they haven't been doing it. So I mean, how long were they doing the five wins before? 15 years like i mean yeah they probably done the other way more than the other like it's being like they've changed this rule for a reason and then now it's being like well now the, the second person it's like well what if we do go back to the old way you know, the old way might be a year we did it like that yeah you know? i think the guy who wrote the article was the one that had to get out after five weeks so maybe he's just bitter that, is it i think i don't i, don't I mean this is sure. all this. <laughs> This is all coming together, you know. I mean, like, you know. I may be wrong about that, but I think I mean, that's, un- that's unbelievable if that's the case. Because why do you even care so much, man? He's like, well, I had to get off. And I don't think that was fair. And you're like, oh. I'd still be on there. Yeah. 30 years later. You go, okay. Okay. Now we're getting, this another article makes complete sense. And yeah, I'm actually yeah. on board with this guy writing it. Uh, all right. Uh, the Long Spring. That's how do we even get into all that stuff after Taco Bell? Like, well, I was I tra- updating oh, stuff yeah. that I shared last oh, week. Oh, yeah. I was like trying to figure out where we were in the comments. <laughs> I'm like, Taco Bell to Jeopardy. <laughs> the Long Spring. My sister got in trouble in elementary school for wearing a t shirt that said, I'm from Dubuque and I'll party till I puke. <laughs> Dubuque and I'll party till I puke. The teacher said that she was wearing a Saturday shirt and made her turn it inside out. A Saturday shirt. I love it's like, that. That's a good way to describe it. But I love that they party so much in Dubuque. You're like, yeah. the shirt's fine. I'm from that's, Dubuque. That's a Saturday. And I'll party till I puke. Yeah. Funny. I could see it being a Saturday, you know. All right. Yeah, it's a weekend shirt. Yeah. You can tell me. Like, I just I, think it's a funny way for a teacher to describe it. It's a, I think it's a, about the best way you could say it. Like, yeah. I, I would think it's a teacher that's like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not saying don't wear it, but. Listen, I got the same shirt. Yeah, I got home. the same shirt at home. This is Tuesday. <laughs> this is Tuesday. It's not a Saturday shirt. Yeah. Uh. Justin Schultz, 
Regional terms are interesting. I moved one state over from Minnesota to Wisconsin when I was 14. I had to change pop to soda and drinking fountain to bubbler. As, as if 14-year-old me needed to give my classmates more reasons to pick on me, I already had thick Coke bottle glasses. So, oh, yeah, because he's like, I need to change it or I'm going to get more made fun of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tracy Thielman. 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 T-H-E-I-L. Man. I'm an English teacher in New York, and one of my favorite lessons is – one I do on dialect as a literary, a literary technique. We go through color-coded maps about the different terms people use for various things throughout the, the country. Even within my class of small town central New York students, there are fun disagreements. When we get to bubbler versus water fountain, it always makes my 11th graders laugh. I can now add toboggan versus beanie to the list. Thanks for the laughs and smiles every week. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people. People like the. Like the top. Yeah. Which I think that's what we're going to be talking about. Yep. Yes, sir. So, solo stove. Colder nights are here. And when we can, we have a nice fire with our friends and family making s'mores over a solo stove. Uh, neighbor Felix, he had a solo stove the other day out uh, when we had a big snowstorm. Also, solo stove. Uh, you know, we have a fire pit in our backyard. And solo stove is better than that. It's yeah. better than fire pit. It just doesn't. There's no smoke. I mean, that's the the biggest thing. It has been great. Uh, we're getting rid of our fire pit actually, it's, uh, and we just need a solar stove down there. There's no setup. Just unbox and enjoy. It becomes your own fire pit. A little fire starter wood, and you can have a nice fire quickly. We have the bonfire version with the stand. It burns down to white ash. Uh, super easy to clean up. Uh, it's the perfect catalyst for getting outside and spending more time with family. The fire looks awesome. It's very, you know, it's a, it's a real, it looks like a real, you know, like a good, good fire. A good fire means a lot. The way it's like, it kind of keeps it all st together. Oh, yeah. And it looks very nice. Uh, so stove fire pits are brill brilliantly engineered, made with a premium grade 304 stainless steel, which we know that's good. And 360, uh, 360 degree airflow system that maximizes efficiency while minimizing smoke. Easy to light with a few bits of starter. Your fire is blazing in minutes. Shop now and get up to 30% off fire pits all month long and use promo code Nate at checkout to get an extra $10 off plus a lifetime warranty and free 30 day returns. Just go to solostove.com and remember, you get $10 off when you use promo code Nate. Also, Viore, the whole podcast crew, got a few new things for the winter months. Laura got the performance jogger uh, with the Halo hoodie, and she says it's she, it's super soft. I felt it. It's great. She wears it all the time. I got a, the performance joggers that I wear all the time. Uh, you two, y'all got stuff. Yeah. Uh, Viore is a new outlook on a performance apparel. Perfect if you are sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. Workout gear is stuff that you're wearing more now. Uh, people wear it outside of working out just to go do stuff. And uh, Viore looks very good. Viore can be worn for just about any activity, running, training, yoga. But it's, I mean, like we said, you wear it to go out, to go when you run around during the day. You look nice. Uh, I see people wearing uh, stuff and it looks great. The website is very easy to order from, not cluttered or busy. Uh, order something today. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioriclothing.com slash Nate. That is V-U-O-R-I clothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to vioriclothing.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Uh, also, Athletic Greens. Our new partner has a product I've started using every day. I had it uh, today before I came up here. We all had some. We had some. Uh, I started taking Athletic Greens because, uh, you know, like I don't eat the best. It's a way to get all the vitamins that you're supposed to get uh, and you just pound a drink. It makes it super easy. Laura made them. She made us all one and then we just pounded. it. Yeah, because I don't want you to have an unfair disadvantage from this weight loss thing. Yeah. So I'm like, Laura, hook me up. Yeah, she got you going. Uh, it's, it's just good to like, you know, you got like taking vitamins. Uh, it's just nice to like, you just, you know, you feel better afterwards. You, you do feel, I felt better right away. Uh, you just, it is, you can tell that you're like, all right, yeah, I'm doing so, something so right. So go listening to your body. The, the, uh, I, I'm trying to be more healthy. Like I said, 
So it's a great way to start the morning. The taste is great. Easy to start your day with it. One scoop. I, uh, I do one scoop of powder with water, shake, and drink. The travel packs are great for when I'm on the road. Uh, contains less than one gram of sugar. No GMOs. No nasty chemicals. Uh, right now, it is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It is just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit Athletic Greens athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Nate to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. It's the thick of New Year's resolution season, okay? And trust me, you don't want to get trapped into a gym membership for life. Here's something you can (laughs) actually do that will make you a better person. Super easy. Babbel. This was a language learning app. Over 10 million people are using it. They sold over 10 million subscriptions. Huh. What's different about Babbel is that this, it's a real person making these lessons. It's not some robot. It's not AI teaching you. It's somebody who speaks the language, and they're, they put together these little lessons. They're short. It's fun. You can kind of blaze through them. It's like reading a book with short chapters. Yeah. You really feel like you're making progress. No bill. Like a, a novella. novella. Yeah, yeah. It's like a novella for sure. So with Babbel, you can choose 14 different languages. I just started Russian. Oh, wow. Ooh. And that's very fun. If what made you choose that? Nyeh. That's that's one of the first words I know. Oh, there. really? Yeah, you yeah. take the what lesson. That, you can, mean? that means no. Oh. <laughs> Nyeh. Nyeh. <laughs> Russian's difficult because it's a lot, It's a different, uh, whole different uh, alphabet. Oh. But it's very fun. There's somebody talking. You talk back to it. It'll let you know how your pronunciation is. It, it is. It's really Are fun. Are you preparing for when they when they take over? You're yeah, just, why did you, you already slip Russian? in and then? Because I'm scared of Russians. Yeah. For sure. So I want to be able to. You just went. <laughs> oh, so basically, you just went to whatever country you're most scared of and go, well, who do I think is going to take over? And I'll learn their language. So I'm at least. I want to be able to plead for my life yes. in this yes. language. Yes. And I am well on my way with Babel. Uh, and w- when you have a subscription, you can get uh, there's podcasts, there's games, there's videos, there's stories, even live classes you can take. Plus, comes with a 20 day money back guarantee. Trust me, you're not going to need it. So easy, so fun. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. And right now, when you use our promo code, you get a three month subscription. You'll get another three months for wow. free. That's six months for the price of three. After six months, dude, I will be doing. I'm going to start a Russian errand land. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, and I'm going to take off in Moscow. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com, use promo code Nate. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code Nate, Babbel, language for life. There we go. Uh, so this week, uh, yeah, we were, we're going to talk about uh, people like I'm going to take Canadian. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good or- night. I mean... When did you think of that? <laughs> well, right now. You thought that joke right there, or like how much longer before? While he was reading. Oh. <laughs> I was hoping at least it was right now. <laughs> the fact that you said on it. I liked it. I'm going to take American. <laughs> like, I don't, you know. Well, Canadian, because we keep saying their words wrong. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they've been threatening us. That's why. Because you okay. said to take the one that was the yeah. most scared of. Right now, I'm scared of the Canadians. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Back his way, yeah. <laughs> it was a good joke in the 80s. <laughs> it still works now. <laughs> still relevant now. Yeah. <laughs> the jerk store called Nate. <laughs> the jerk store. They're running out of you. Uh, so we are going to talk about it. All right. Re- do you have those uh, words? Oh, how yeah. How do you pronounce those? Oh, Let's yeah. Start with We've this. got them up here. I want to hear how you guys pronounce these four words on the screen. Should we spell them for the listeners first? A-U-N-T. We'll just ant. <laughs> Grocery. Caramel or caramel, no caramel, mayonnaise. All right. So three out of those four, you said them like most Southerners pronounce them. Yeah. One of those you did not. Which one do I think? Uh, Caramel? No, that's the way most uh, Southerners say it. Aunt? The South and Upper East Coast have three syllables in caramel. The rest of the country says caramel. Caramel? Two, Two syllables. Caramel? Yeah. Oh. Did you say those the same way? Ant, grocery, caramel, mayonnaise. So you said one of those different than him. Yeah. What was that? Caramel? The second one. Grocery. 
grocery. It's a grocery. 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 Mm-hmm. What? It's a grocery store, right? Well, <laughs> some parts of the country, like the Northeast, New England, say grocery, like you said it. Yeah. And we say it usually grocery. Grocery. Yeah, like a like C H, like it's or S H S H. Grocery. The grocery. Grocery. Store. Grocery store. Grocery. Grocery. Yeah. Yep. Uh, mayonnaise. You said mayonnaise, it's right? Be a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good. Yeah, it goes, it goes. <laughs> We're three minutes huh. in. <laughs> wow. This is how I thought we could start it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your first joke this is like when you open with a. I don't want something that murders. All right. All right. I'll do it. <laughs> thought this would be a good way to get into it. I may be wrong now. Uh, the South and Mid- Midwest say mayonnaise with two syllables. But mayonnaise? Main mayonnaise. Yeah. But the West and Northeast say it with three syllables. Mayonnaise. Uh, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Right. Mayonnaise. Right. Say mayo. And how, how do you say L A W Y E R? L A W Y. Lawyer. So you say it? Lawyer. Most of the country says lawyer. Lawyer? Yep. Well, that's why I say Laura. So Laura, uh, most, a lot of people say Laura to her, and we, it's Laura. L-A-U-R-A. It's still spelled Laura, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, but she says it Laura. So a lot of people say Laura. It's Laura. There's an online test where you can, the New York Times is an online test where you can answer 25 questions and it will tell you what part of the country you're from. Yeah. And it, I did it. It gives you three cities that you're probably from. It was Columbus, Georgia, Chattanooga, or Nashville. Oh, really? Wow. So wow. For me. Ruth did it. Now, she lived the first 10 years of her life in Connecticut and Pennsylvania, the next 10 or 12 in California. Then she was in D.C. for eight, and now she's been in Nashville for like 12. Yeah. So it was really confused about her. Yeah. But it still put her most likely in Northern California. Oh, Which wow. is where she went to college. Yeah. Uh, she says stuff differently. Like, like what? What do you she's call? She's educated. She is so educated. Probably, educated probably throws you out of the south. But she's lived in <laughs> like it's like if you talk, if you go to I would think, you know, like you they're not going to be they might you say stuff proper like you talk you got to talk to people that like hey, yeah you're right all right yeah I think I I think I still I'm I think I'm still pretty southern though the way I speak sometimes. We'd have a well at my house growing up, but I, yeah, you know, yeah. There was one question I answered. You did, but y'all did it a science project and <laughs> to see how people yeah, live, like how people, a mission yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went to Lebanon, Tennessee, and said, "Sir, can I help you with some of that?" You go, "Well, boy, come on over here." And then you, <laughs> the fact you said it like we say it. It's usually three syllables, Lebanon, but we say Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah. What would you call the road that you drive? What do you call I forty? Interstate. It's an interstate. It's what the I stands for. Yep. But a lot of people like West Coast. Yeah. Freeway. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Freeway. But it's so interstate. I always say that. I'll change that. That's the one that you change. I'll sometimes change in my act. If I think I'm, I'll just say freeway for some reason. I'll just think like, well, if it, not that it really matters, but if you're like, if the joke doesn't really, I don't really care about that word. And I just want to make sure you, can picture what I'm picturing. Yeah. So I'll say whatever word I need, I need, I want you to hear. Mm-hmm. So if I think you think, if I think if you think freeway, and I've actually thought about interstate and highway. I don't know if I even say freeway. I say, I might say highway. Yeah. And then I'll think about that. I'm like, well, highway might be a smaller. Technically it is. Yeah. So then I'm like, so I need to probably go back to interstate. And I think I went back to interstate, but I'm just picking the word that when I'm just trying to make you picture it. So. The word doesn't really matter. I just need you to. You're just painting the picture. I'm just yeah. painting the picture. So whatever makes you, you know, it might not be the word that I say, but whatever word helps this. Have you done a lot of stand up in Canada? And, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. How much do you have to? None. Really? I mean, that's like everywhere. I think that's the biggest mistake we make is to adjust. If you're doing a show there and people are there to see you, they know, like, they're not dumb. People like get it. And it's not saying that they're like, I mean, everybody kind of has that feeling. Well, I think there's a feeling with that with everywhere. Everybody thinks everybody's dumb. Yeah. So they think no one, no one's going to know anything. Yeah. And I'm saying, I think Canada feel that if they come here. We all like have that feeling. I think it's probably one of the big problems in the world right now is everybody assumes everybody except them is dumb. Yeah. And you're going to go, actually, everybody's actually very, very smart and people are not dumb. And majority of the world 
we, we can wrap our head around what's going on. And so if, I, if I'm laughing at your jokes, I, I, go ahead and do your jokes. I'm, not, I'm here. I'm not going like, well, what is that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. You, what, what is a Walmart? You don't have like a gas station. What's a gas station? And then you, you, just have, to, you yeah. have to walk out because you're like, I didn't get any of it. Uh-huh. Like if they're, if they're there, just assume they're I, – I always assume my audience is smarter than me. So, I mean, the only thing I could even – where I, if I'm doing anything, is to make sure the picture gets painted. So it could be I, if I'm really trying to make you f- picture this in your head. That's the only time I would. It's, but it's like I'm not doing it because, and I have done it. I'm not saying I'm like figured that out. And it's hard not to want to do it. But I, you got to remind yourself, you're there doing comedy. They're not uh-huh. dumb. My first time doing stand up in Canada, I was freaking out about like say in washroom instead of bathroom. Yeah. And I was talking to this guy. I was like, are you and they're like, yeah, we know what a bathroom is. Yeah. You idiot. <laughs> I was yeah. Like, All right. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's your first time going. I mean, I, I honestly, I think everybody has this feeling. I think everybody would, uh, could, I mean, toboggan would obviously throw them off. Uh, That's a sled. Yes. Yes. So there's some things they would maybe mm-hmm. totally, but not in, but I mean, yeah. So if you have, if you're, if you're going up there and you're a toboggan heavy comedian and you're like, <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, my act is my point is there's some mainly words toboggans. That it's not and a, you go, well, I would, smart. It's whether it, if you, you know, want this to go good, I would say toque. <laughs> if you want to have, yeah. because I don't know, but it, toboggan works so good. He goes, do you want to sell them afterwards or not? If you're selling them toboggans as merch, say, guys, you want some toques? <laughs> Some tokes. Some tokes. Leanne says she used to work with a comedian from California, and she'd do shows in the South. And she's like, guys, where I'm from, we're this thing called vegan. Yeah. And she said she told her, we know what vegans are in the South. But yeah. But she was from L.A. or something, and she didn't, she didn't think we didn't have them here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody, I mean, everybody thinks. That's so I think that's the. Oh, well, I think, I honestly think the only problem, uh, the problem with the country and the world now is condescending. Is that thing? Is people think they're smarter than than they think their friends, the people they're with, we're all cool, and then they think anybody outside of that, they're like, dude, they're like so dumb, and that's the number one problem with everything. So if you just like they they assume everybody's dumb, like the vegan thing, they think the South, and this is me, I get a little definitive, but I think they have an image of the South that's not a good image. And they, uh, you know, people just come to the South and they'll be like, what are y'all doing? They're like, someone that came, which is funny, that BB gun, I think I said that here, but like, guys, like, you go see a lot of guns down there and you're like, that's just like, that's someone now, 2021, that you're 22, that goes like, well, they got a lot of guns down there. And not saying that people do have guns down here, but you're like, I don't see guns. Yeah. I don't walk around and just see like it's the Wild West, but they, in their head, you're going to picture that. Yeah. And that's the problem with every, like, we all picture. If you go to Canada, you're like, what is it? You know, they're going to be Eskimos. Syrup they're be everywhere. Syrup. Yeah. They're going to, you're going to think whatever you think of it. And you want to go, hey, et, just assume everybody's as smart as you. Just go ahead and assume that. Yeah. That's what everybody should do. Every interaction you have, assume the person, assume they're smarter than you, maybe. Just assume that. That would be a better, you have a better experience if I treat you with that than if I treat you dumb. Yeah. And I think most people treat people dumb. Yeah. And so if you if they feel they're being talked down to, that's the disconnect. Yeah. My audience is probably smarter. Than, I mean, realistically, they're I get that I'm funnier or something, like or I get I can be creative or whatever, but they are gonna be smarter than me. Most the people that come to these shows, I'm not gonna be able to talk to them about like real stuff. Like I don't like they're super smart. Like they like have real jobs and like they did stuff. So it's like you 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 know, you you treat everybody with just that you're smarter. I don't think you ever have a problem with anybody. Yeah. Because you're at least showing them the respect. Right. But we don't do that. No one does that. Yeah. Everybody goes, well, I'm just, I'm the one. I bet the other ones are dumb. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I totally agree with that. Uh, solo stove. <laughs> we'll be right, right back. back. <laughs> solo stove. <laughs> what did you just ask? I got my wife solo stove for uh for Valentine's Day, by the way. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, that's Fun romantic. little gift. Yeah, yeah. you know, are you being sarcastic? Yeah. You don't think that's romantic to have a little fire pit? Yeah. You can hang out by the fire You're out pit? there. And, hey, ma'am. Yeah. Want, hey, lady. Want for Valentine's? I want you to go out and start a fire. I'll awesome. go out there and start it. Yeah, 
You know? Yeah. You know, I thought Valentine's Day, what if you go outside and not be near me? (laughs) I bought you a fire so you'd be warm. I will say, if you're trying to nice. discreetly order a solo stove, it will show up in a huge box that says solo stove on yeah. the box. So. You might be a click. Can you click something that says gift? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I didn't do that. Yeah. Mm. Um, what do you call the rubber sole shoes you go to the gym in? I say tennis shoes. Tennis shoes is what I've always yeah. called them. Yeah. Never played tennis. Yeah. 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 Most of the country does. My wife calls them sneakers. Yeah, I think I've even started saying sneakers just because enough people – that would be one that was like sometimes – if I – it's not like you're not too dumb to get it, but if I felt you were going to ask about it, then I would just do whatever to – you know, if like I was like, oh, I went and bought some tennis shoes and I just don't want you to go, what? Why did you – I would just say, I'll say whatever to stop the conversation because I'm talking to an idiot. And the opposite of what I just yeah, said. I, go, I tell you, half these people I talk to, i tell you what. Are morons. Morons. <laughs> They are just dumb, dumb, dumb. All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, most of the country, if if it's the sun's out when it's raining, most of the country don't have a word for that. With the sun's out when it's raining? Yeah. Do you have a word for that, what you'd call that? When the sun's out and it's raining? Yeah. No. Uh, in parts of the Northeast and Florida, they refer to it as a sun shower. Oh. In parts of Mississippi and Alabama, they call it the devil is beating his wife. <laughs> so we Do they really? Up. Yeah, yeah. You know what? that term? I, feel, I heard that growing up. If it's if it's the sun's out and it's raining. Yeah, the what devil's you, beating uh, his wife today. Yeah. Was it you're doing a habitat for humanity? <laughs> and that's where you heard it? <laughs> you go. And y'all drove down your mountain to talk to the regular folk? <laughs> <laughs> the devil's yeah. beating his wife. I heard teachers would use it, regular people. In school? Really? Oh, yeah. It was just an expression. Yeah. It doesn't happen that often. I mean, how often does this weather phenomenon well, happen? Not enough. that often, but you know, enough for a term. I think that's what a real abusive relationship is. Well, I mean, how often are you really, am I really hitting you? You go, I guess not every day. Is that? I mean, that's the <laughs> saying, oh, all right. And then the, then the wife has to be like, I mean, I guess I can't complain about it. It's not every day, you know. Yeah. In Florida, it's every day. I guess they, so. they, it rains in. I think my like every day they get it. They always say that they get like just a hard shower uh, at some point during the day. They don't stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've never heard. That's crazy. That seems like a lot. Like if someone said that, that would be like, what's that? I don't like weathermen aren't using this term, you know, <laughs> on the news or well, anything. Well, it's in the education. The teachers are using it. The you know, educators. Hell, kids, the devil's beating his wife today. Yeah. Do you have any idea what it means or how that – I mean, I have, a, I have an image of what it means, the devil beating his wife. But in reference to the weather? No, I have no idea. I have no idea she's where that crying? comes from. I guess she's crying. And he's the, the devil. The sun's so burning on it? Maybe. I think, yeah. I didn't dig into it like that. But, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I like it. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start saying that again. Yeah, the devil's beating his wife. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And we're a wife beater. <laughs> that's what the shirt that's what the shirt is if you I bet a lot of people that say that have that shirt on and then there's just a lot of like <laughs> like you have to go and goes uh, guys walks out and wife Peter and goes yep, devil's beating his wife today and you're like oh <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, in New England they call milkshakes frappies yeah that doesn't make sense no I don't like that frappies yep I thought Frappy was a coffee. I thought it was a milkshake too. to them is just milk and syrup until you add the ice cream. Until you add the ice cream. A milkshake to them is just milk and syrup yeah. until you add the ice cream. If it's not a, if And then it becomes a frappy? Yeah, which makes it a frappy. That would be uh except in Rhode Island where they call it a cabinet. A cabinet? Mm-hmm. Because that's where the blender is kept that you make it. That I means so you just call it whatever you wherever you keep the stuff at. <laughs> that's you know. <laughs> That was, I mean, everything could be a cabinet. Then you go, can I get a cabinet? Yeah, what do you want? I'll take a banana. Just keep, I know one keeps bananas in the cabinet. That wasn't a good example, but would someone ever keep a banana? That would be real weird. Uh, keep bananas. If you in the went cabinet? over to someone's house and you said, hey, can I have a banana? And you opened the cabinet and they gave you a banana, would you think you would say, so? would, you'd probably have to say something and go, you keep bananas in that yeah, cabinet? You don't just leave them out on the counter, huh? Yeah. Maybe it could be good for you to Can't leave be, it. Why? I don't know. I just think, <laughs> why not? You never think about it. We talk about, you know, I put ketchup out and I start putting my bananas in. I might hide them in my cabinet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep uh, them fresh. Keep them fresh. Don't they say if you hang bananas, they'll stay fresh longer? 
I've heard that once you once you take one off, then it's it's over. It's over. Yeah, the rest of them they start to ripen super quickly. Yeah. Once you break the seal, you got like a. I think Seinfeld used to have a joke, but they like some of the eating fruit. But you, you have about an hour with the banana. Like <laughs> you buy it, it's like not good, and then I mean you have a window. Pretty quick. It's pretty quick, and I like bananas a lot. But you gotta, you gotta be on. You gotta be thinking about them if you buy them, because they go to bad. I think you, they gotta be on your mind the whole time you buy them. Mm-hmm. I think you gotta just be back. Of your head's gotta be like banana, 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 banana. banana, banana, banana cabinet though that's yeah. crazy that's uh you know my mom used to do growing up if she got something a food from the store that she didn't want the kids to eat right away she'd take a sharpie and she'd write no on the box mm-hmm. so if you look through our cabinet it's just all kinds of stuff just <laughs> no and if we're trying to find something to eat no she yeah. wants to save it mm. it's a very funny thing to do yeah did you honor that request? No, nah, I think me and my dad would disobey every now and <laughs> yeah. then. But I remember my dad once taking the box, flipping it upside down. He says, on. Oh, <laughs> and then yeah. we'd just eat it from there. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Like candy or? If she's like, let's see, we got like Nilla wafers. Yeah. She's like, I want to save these for school lunches. Yeah. No. Yeah. On the yeah. box. Okay. That's funny. Uh, yeah. The cabinet thing's crazy. I mean, that I, they call you on a cabinet a milkshake because- I think they would even feel embarrassed about that. And I'm not saying everyone in Rhode Island, but that's just what the article says. Because they had some stuff here about Tennessee. I'm like, nobody says that. But. Uh, Rhode Island does. How many Rhode <laughs> Islands is that? How many Rhode Islands will fit in a cabinet? It's <laughs> a good question. You say yard sale or garage sale? Garage sale. I say rummage sale. Um, no, I don't. Oh, that is no, one. I don't. No, I don't. That's rummage like, sale sounds like you'd be oh you got a rummage sale going on you're like it's a little better than that dude like it's you know i would be offended if someone what is this a rummage sale you're like i don't know dude we're not doing that bad i got some good stuff yeah here, dude connecticut and wisconsin call them tag sales or rummage sales tag sales most of the country calls it yard sale it, no one says garage sale some it's some a, do but most people this part of the country call them yard sales oh i would always say garage sale. a garage sale too i say yard sale Huh? I always said yard sales, but I've heard I both. I feel like you go to a lot of them too, so <laughs> you wouldn't know. <laughs> well, you feel I'm like expert. a yard sale. <laughs> I think you would be a yard sale guy. Yeah? Yeah. Look some old baseball cards? Yeah. Ooh, Just showing up. I always feel embarrassed. It's always kind of like weird walking up. To a yard sale? Yeah. You like park you and then it's like, yard sale. I, know. I know, but I always feel a little weird. Like you're just walking in someone's like yard and, and start then, combing through their yeah. stuff. And like, you know, and you're like, you feel like, well, I got to talk to them. It's, it's like yeah. so personal. It's not a store. Mm-hmm. You're not like a target being like, yeah, hey, man, I'm just like, you know, it's like, it's like guys, these kids are running around. Like, you know, and you're like, huh, eh, eh, and you got to, and then you got to, yeah, stuff, hat, like this, you know, this. I'll give you $2 for it. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. And I, and I like the idea. Of, I think they're. I like the idea. Of, uh-huh. Two dollars. That's a good. That's a high price yeah. for a hat. For a hat. Is that what you said? No, I just said two dollars. I don't. Oh, know. I thought you said a hat. Yeah, most things are like twenty five cents. Yeah. For a box. <laughs> yeah. Box just of stuff. Stuff, and you yeah. go through it, and buy yeah. what you want. You just leave it there. Uh, yeah. Big trucks that go across the interstate. What do you call those? Big trucks. <laughs> yeah, semi trucks. <laughs> Um, Eight, 18 wheelers is what we always called them. The South mostly calls them 18 wheelers. Uh, Westerners call them semi trucks. Northerners call them tractor trailers. See, I think I have a mix of Louisville, Kentucky. Mm. Does Louisville consider itself the South or it's right on the cusp? Uh, I mean, I think they act like it, but they're, they say, like my mom says, our, like an, for an hour, she'll say our. Really? We're back in an hour. Shower. I'm gonna go take a shower in an hour. Like it's like that kind of sounds so they, Irish. There's, a, uh, there's like a little. There's that kind of northern. Like I, I, I Abigail says a little bit like that. So I think we have. I my that's what my accent's always kind of weird. Like I have my dad had a speech impediment. I mean I didn't really I didn't really get a fair shot coming out. <laughs> we have two. I'm learning can, Louisville, Nashville. My dad has a speech impediment, I, and my mom says iron wash, washer, washer, washer. Like, I mean, I, I mean, you're lucky that I speak the language. <laughs> you're the fact that I make money speaking is unbelievable. It's f- phenom level of the fact that 
I, that I, there's so many times when I sometimes when I am talking on stage, I'm like, I don't even know how people are like go like I. There's times I'm like, am I getting too? I think I'm. It's too dumb, <laughs> yeah. or it's too like people are like, what? You are like, do you know who Wilma Rudolph was? She <laughs> overcame polio to become an Olympic track star. Yeah, you're the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a modern day Wilma Rudolph. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's nice. Yeah. There. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's times I'm in my act, I'm like, I don't, man, are people just like, like, I mean, you're like, you're like, I think they're laughing. Like, they got to be laughing just at you and being <laughs> like, I don't know, we're watching like a zoo animal. It's like going to the zoo. Yeah. It's okay. They're going to feed them in an hour. I totally done that where I get a big laugh and I think like my zipper's undone or something. Oh, yeah. Like, it just felt. I check it. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I always check. I check it right when I walk out. As you're walking out? Yeah, I should check it before, but you do check it before, but then when you get there, you're like, let me make sure. I just, you just like do, you wave, you're just going to touch the, make sure it zips up and yeah. go about your day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The South is the most religious part of the country. Probably no surprise there. Vermont's the least religious state. Mm -hmm. No surprise there. Yeah. Yep. Only 42% of residents consider religious. Mississippi, the most religious, mm -hmm. 85%. Am I crooked letter, crooked letter I? Crooked letter, crooked letter I. Hump back, hump back I. There it is. What? <laughs> That's how you would spell Mississippi. Am I crooked letter, crooked letter I? Crooked letter, crooked letter I. Hump back, hump back I. You learned that in school? Yep. Yep. So they taught us. And they said the devil's beating his wife. The devil's beating his wife. <laughs> uh, Maine is the youngest state in the U.S., average age 30.7. Oh, I thought it was like the youngest, like. The last one. The last one. I'm like, oh, good for them. <laughs> Thirty point seven is the average age in the, Maine. The median age, yeah. Wow, that's Co crazy. According to this, which is Cole's research, Alaska is the highest. Cole's research, forty four point five. Like the store. Wow. Our that's intern it, Cole. Yeah. Oh. The okay. uh, I would say Alaska. I guess because you can't get out. It's like they're there. You're there. <laughs> you thought they'd be the oldest? No, I could see them being the oldest. Okay. Like you're not going to be. I think if you're born in Alaska and you get like, do you have a greater chance of people don't leave? Even though you would think like people would move away from Alaska, but I, th I think they love it and they're proud of it. And so like the people that live there, yeah, they're going to, they stay there forever. I can see that. It's the most ownership you could have of a state. I feel like Hawaii, Alaska, Hawaii. Like those are like, you're, you're your own thing. Yeah. You're like, this is what I am, dude. Uh huh. You know? Yep. The South has some of that, I think, too. Texas has a bunch of it. Texas has a lot of that. South in general has a, like, you're, you know, I definitely can feel, you know, I was, like, excited to move back home. Yeah. Like, you're just, but I think, but in New York, I guess everywhere does that. But I would think Alaska and Hawaii's got the most, because they're just on their own. But, yeah, New Yorkers, like, that want to go. I'm not, uh, Julian, again, that we were talking, he's talking about, we were talking about moving, like, moving back to New Jersey. He's from New Jersey and, or Philadelphia kind of area. But then New York. And people just want to go back there. And, like, it's always crazy to me when they think, like, God, I just want to go back to New York. It's, like, it's great. You just walk around and go get whatever you want to go get. Like, and you're, like, well, that's all they know. So like, that's what they yeah. that's what they love. They love that. Yeah. And so it's, like, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. But I would think Alaska and Hawaii has got to be the most. You feel that way about Lebanon? You going to go back one day? I hope so. I'd like to. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we've talked about soft drinks on here, what you call them. South Coke. Yeah. Uh, North and Midwest call it pop, and New England and both coasts call it soda. Eastern Massachusetts and part of Maine call it tonic. I've started saying soda more, but I would say Coke. It says that we say Coke. A lot of the South does, yeah. Yeah. I Tonic. And I was talking to my uncle the other day in Lebanon, and he called it, I mean, I'll hear this a lot, a cold drink. Yeah. And we'll get me a cold drink. Yeah. You ever heard that? No, I don't know. Were y'all talking on the phone? Do you have a <laughs> operator? She goes, Sarah. <laughs> can I talk to my uncle? Look at Mayberry, Andy Griffith. Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, can you get my uncle on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> cold, a cold drink. He's having a cold drink. He said he'll call you back. All right, Sarah. Uh, I think that's a very Southern thing. Uh, cold I've, drink. I hear some guys yeah. cold beers. That's what they yeah. say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and have a few cold beers. The, uh, I would say, I started saying soda and I almost say soda now. I always said Coke, but then that was one that I, 
it's not, it's again, I don't think I was, I was like, I was saying Coke. It's like, I'm, it was not enough people knew what that, like, and I get it. Cause I'm, and then I was like, well, I'm gonna just say soda. A lot of stuff, I, if you change it just for the jokes, I'm trying to just make it as, what's the easiest way to yeah. understand what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You know? Because I think if you said Coke on stage, you would have to like. Isn't that exactly a joke opposite it. of what you just said? No, because it's not saying that they they could get it. But Coke, if, if you're, I, I just think, I think they would get it. But it's like, do I want them to even have an ounce of confusion? Like if I don't want them to trail off at all, like I don't want I don't want your mind to go like, oh, I bet he means soda. Yeah. Like I want you to be so into what I'm saying that I'm just going to say the thing that gets you there. That's not saying that they're dumb. That's saying I don't want you. to It's be just going to be distracted. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be distraction. So that's not. Wouldn't you agree? No, that's crazy. It is exactly <laughs> that. If I don't want you to be distracted, I'm just trying to get to the point. Well, I, I mean, I think that's the opposite. It's exactly what you say. You're like, you just say what you say. People aren't dumb. They're going to get it. No, that's not. There's a difference between being distracted. There's a difference going like, do y'all know what a Walmart is? Like, it's like, that's being dumb. What do y'all in the South? Y'all just have guns. Everybody walk around. <laughs> that's talking like they're dumb. But if you're going like, I'm going to say soda, yeah. just so people don't. Everybody knows what soda is, and I don't want you to be distracted from the joke. That's how you make a joke really work. You should try it. Uh, <laughs> in Saskatchewan... <laughs> A hoodie is considered a bunny hug. I mean, yeah, you knew that. No, <laughs> but you say old, uh, my old lady, old man. You hear people say oh, that? Yeah, yeah. That can mean that can mean your dad or your like your spouse, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a little confusing. My old man. Yeah, a lot of uh, Travis thinks his old man to his dad. The old man's coming. You know, it's a weird. Some of like I don't. Uh, we never said that, but then old lady. I think it's funny to hear old lady. I want you to be really country if you're saying old lady. Yeah. I think I want you to you're I want you to you have a truck, you have some land, you live on a you know, like you could survive on your own. You think that's a southern thing? I think it is, but I want you to be like I want you I want all the you could live off the grid. If you can live off the grid, then I think you can say old lady. That's like that. And I uh, like it. The Duck Dynasty guy, he called yeah. his wife Miss K. Yeah. I was like, that's the most southern thing I could think of. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, it's, but if you're something like that. that, he if you're if you're like that, I feel like when someone's doing it and you're like you're not that southern, like you know, you're like you can't can live off the grid. That's what I consider most the most southern. Mm. You're modernized southern. Y'all were close. You, I mean, you kind of did because you were so far out. Yeah, we um, on that quiz I took the twenty five question quiz. I lied about one. I said what I've said all my life, which is the last meal of the day is supper. Mm-hmm. My mom considers the last meal of the day not dinner. She calls it supper, which mm-hmm. we've heard that. Yeah, but yeah she yeah. calls lunch dinner. Oh, which oh. I think more people. Have I've never heard, heard that. that. I think it's just wrong, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> not to her. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, but uh, it's it's lunch. That's what it's yeah. called. Yeah. Well, right? I don't know if it always has been. All right, in some parts of the world, uh, tipping in in Japan, tipping is considered rude because good service is standard and expected. I, yeah, I mean the tipping thing. I uh, I saw someone. It was just like one of those like some fact or something somewhere in here in America. Someone just said they just paid the servers and stuff more money. Uh, I yeah. I mean, look. I I mean, I worked on tips. Uh, tips are great. Like that's how I got started. Like I'm not against tipping, but I also am not against like if you just had it like you know just standard or whatever. You know. Yeah, if they were just paid. Yeah, ten dollars an hour or whatever, or more. Yeah, or pay. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is, if they pay them, and they should be make as much money as they could with tipping. Yeah, and then they always make that money, and then that would be, and then you know, in Australia, there's a ten percent goods and services tax on every bill, and that's kind of accepted. That is the tip. Yeah, like you're paying it, but it's in the mm. bill. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I would almost like I like I like that. Like I like the idea of being like if you're like twenty percent added to everything. I'll pay. I'll play devil's advocate here. All right. Be, gonna beat your wife. I'm gonna be <laughs> yeah. gonna beat my wife. All right. If could you argue that the, the quality of service will drop a little bit if you I could. if I'm not working for tips anymore? You could, but I, tipping's getting now. I mean it may be not but I feel like tipping is just like it's so standard that you're even if your service is bad, I think a lot of people still tip twenty percent. I don't I, I don't think you're even 
you don't make a point. It's not a statement anymore. It'd be insane. I mean, you would have to have a fight with the server yeah. for it to be zero, for you yeah. to go, I'm leaving nothing. Like, it would have to be a knockdown, drag out fight. I, I've, the only time I've ever done it was with a cab driver once. And we got in a huge fight because they, in New York, uh, when you lived in Queens, if you got in a cab from LaGuardia to go to Queens, they would be furious because they wanted, they, they send that long line to wait to go get a fare to New York. So yeah. they, and like, I, I understand it, but it's like one of those that you're like, well, what do you want me to do, dude? Not go home. Cause LaGuardia is in Queens, right? Yeah. Okay. So it'd be very quick and easy. And like, so like the dude you would get in and I mean, I would get so self-conscious and embarrassed to be like, I'd almost want to go to New York just to get in a subway and go home. Because that was so, like, you'd get in there, I'm going to Queens. And then he'd be like, and they would just be f mad at you. And they, yeah. I mean, one guy gets in an argument with me, like, because I live in Queens. And we got in a, we ended up getting a huge, and I got out and I was like, I, I tipped zero on that. Like, and I, and I showed him I was tipping zero. <laughs> like, it was like, it was, I made it a whole point. But it was, it was, but it ruined me where anytime I go now, I don't want to get in a cab unless I'm going to where I think they, New York got real bad with that for a while. Where you get in cabs, and if you were, if you were like even going home from New York, if you were like in Manhattan, you're like I could go out to Queens. They, I mean, they, I'd watch. They drive away from me. You go, where are you going, Queens? They'd, they'd leave. They'd want to stay in the city. And I, I mean, I understand it, but you're like, so now you're not. Now your service is not even uh, a thing. Like, yeah. And so then you would go, to, and then you get to New York. That's why, I, like, you start to be like you'd want to like use a car service in Queens. I'd rather just use a car. Like set up a car service. So they know where you're going. So they ahead know where of you're time. going ahead of time. Yeah. So I don't get in a, so there's not an argument. Yeah. Uh I mean, I would be very I I'm mean, always just like would be very self conscious about it. like I know you, you could be like, who cares? Most people can be like, who cares? It's but I could never. I was always like, you know, I I've had Uber drivers they'll cancel on you once they see where you're yeah. going because they want a long trip. They yeah. want something short. Yeah. I think it's the same reason, right? Yeah. Yeah, I find myself tipping now on stuff that I used to not tip on. Like if you're a self service place and you're paying at the counter, but then they'll f you're paying with the credit card, so they'll flip that thing over. Yeah. And in the past, if I paid with cash, I wouldn't have tipped, but now I feel obligated to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I put a tip everywhere. You know what I'm about? Yeah, hundred percent. I don't it's, think I do at the ice cream thing, which we've talked about that a long time ago, right? What? Like the there's an ice cream place where you do it all yourself. Oh yeah, we have to. And they have a tip thing, and that's that's <laughs> infuriating to me. I mean, infuriating. I, that's the only one that I'm like, and I get like you know I, I talked to Felix. He's like, it's just a kid. Like, it's not the kid's fault. It's this. It's the store's fault that makes me mad. Yeah. You're like, I'm literally doing. I'm getting it myself. You go around, you get the ice cream, you get yeah. all the toppings, whatever. I do everything cool until you. I think you're treating me dumb. Yeah. When you when I feel like I'm I'm getting you you think I'm stupid, then I. Yeah. That's my. I, I'll give you money. I don't. I'll get. I don't. I cannot feel any emotion to. I don't want to be mean to anybody, but if I think you think I'm stupid, in that point you do, because you go. I mean, I get the cup. I get the I. Do this. I do it. I do every, all. They do is flip the iPad. They they could technically not just have it turned around, and I could put it on the scale and then be like, it's like almost a checkout. Like at the, there's nothing that they do. I guess they yeah. clean the machines, but then you're like, so well, why even have a business then? So I like. Yeah. I guess we're all tipping the. I got to tip the guy. He's got to clean the bathroom. Like you know, <clears throat> that's the only one that I. I get that. Yeah. Um. Punctuality. Some countries look at punctuality very different. In Germany, you're expected to arrive at least 10 minutes early for any scheduled meeting. If you show up on time, you're late. But in mm -hmm. Mexico, people usually show up 30 minutes late for scheduled meetings. Mm -hmm. And in Brazil, it's impolite to arrive on time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's where uh, at least for Laura some... needs to move to Brazil, <laughs> where it's just like, who do you think you are? <laughs> you said it was 5 o'clock. I thought... You know, is she late everywhere? She's late everywhere. Yeah, uh, it's considered in Brazil to impolite to arrive on time for social occasions uh, due to the fact it's unlikely the host would even be ready to receive the guest. And if you are scheduling an appointment, you're required that you're required to show up time. You're not required to show up on time unless you f use the phrase English time, which means you're supposed to be there when it says. Oh, so they yeah, they believe that if a person arrives 
late, that means they're more successful than a person who shows up on time because they got a lot going on. Yeah. That's the philosophy. <laughs> That's yeah. I mean, it's pretty true. Yeah. If uh, you're going like wide open. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how you can develop a culture of that quickly. When I used to run a show, I think both of y'all did it at one point. I used to run a show at this like tiki bar uh, in downtown Nashville. Yeah. Next and, to Sacco? Yeah, right yeah. next to Sacco there. And we wanted to start at nine o'clock. And I want to be like, we'll start at nine. And then like if you don't if you start at nine thirty once, everyone's like, Oh, they don't start till nine thirty. Yeah. And you just can't you can't get it back. Yeah. Every week I was like, We're starting promptly at nine. Like, come on. Every nine twenty people roll in. You would have like, to say eight thirty. You have to say eight thirty. Yeah. You have to lie. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go eight thirty and we're starting at nine. But then your end up starts showing up till I know. <laughs> like I, you go, well, then I'm going to show up at 9.30, and you give into the system. And I go, well, they're not even going to be there until yeah. I'll just show up late, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Have Morocco, uh, people show up anywhere from half hour late for personal appointments to the next day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you been waiting for that guy? Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> – I was like, how you doing? Uh, that's very funny. <laughs> the next day? Yeah. That's got to be, what, a like a dentist appointment? They call it Moroccan time. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I might be, it's half hour is like amazing. That's like a guy that's life is put together. Yeah. And then the extreme is just the next day. And the fact they have to see you, they would be like, yeah, we got to let them. Your appointment was yesterday. Nah, I didn't want to be yeah. rude. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll come yeah, the next and you, day. You'd just be like, yeah, I'm here. It's Moroccan time. That's great. Uh, different countries eat dinner different times. Spain's usually the latest. They start their meals anywhere from 10 to 11 o'clock. Oh, which, wow. Which I think they mentioned on the uh, dinner party episode of The Office. Yeah. Didn't she say that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she said midnight. And they did. They think they do this because they changed their time zone during World War II to sync up with the Germans. And they never change it back. So people who used to eat lunch at noon, all of a sudden, now they're eating it at one. They didn't change their lunch time. They just started eating an hour late. Yeah. Wow. So now dinner. Is only an hour difference? When they change the time yeah. zone? Yeah. Which doesn't explain why you're eating. Yeah. Because we don't eat at nine, nine to ten. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's one reason they give, that they've never changed the time it's zone just back. slippery after, slope. After like your other, he goes... <laughs> Might as well just have dinner at midnight then. <laughs> you go, I don't know, it's only an hour. <laughs> yeah. um, bathrooms are called different things in different countries. Washrooms. Yep. The loo. The loo in, uh, in, in England. Uh, in France, Germany, and the Netherlands, they call it the water closet or toilet. <laughs> toilet. Oscar. Toilet is funny. Australia calls it a dining. I think toilet is like kind of gross. I feel like bathroom is like a washroom. I don't like, I like washroom. It feels, if washroom feels a little more uh, like proper. It does. And so like. And more accurate. I can see why other countries are like, well, you're not resting and you're not taking a bath. I'm resting. A restroom. A a a restroom is, uh, restroom even sounds better. Like bathroom, restroom, washroom, you know. And someone's like, where's the toilet? You're like, good night, man. He's <laughs> just beat him back with a broom. Just get back out of here. Get here. Like just, you know. It's like, oh, you're looking for the John? I yeah. mean, that's in- Yeah, what do you call the portable? The portable ones. Porta Johns. Porta Johns. That's what I call. Is that what you call them? Yeah. I don't know. I I started calling it that over the last couple of years. I like it. Yeah. Better than Porta potty. Yeah, I hate saying that. Porta Johns. Porta potty. Maybe I, I say porta potty. I hate porta potty. Yeah, I guess I do too. <laughs> yeah, I think really. I we have one in our I driveway forgot. right now. Uh, porta John. Porta potty. Yeah, I think I say porta potty. What do you call the bathroom on the plane? I don't know. I've never gone. The bathroom. Uh, well, uh, an air air John. Isn't it? Um, and it calls it. I forgot. Uh, the water closet. No. no. It's like uh, I don't know. Lavatory. Lavatory. lavatory, thank yeah. you. Lavatory. Yeah, thank but you don't even go. I'm going to go to the lavatory. You go. I'm going to the bathroom. They say the lavatory when they tell you, so you know. Yeah. But no one goes. I'm going to go to the lavatory. One of my old jobs was I used to work at a uh, Porta John Island, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we did a st- <laughs> an episode on odd jobs. I don't think you ever mentioned this. Uh, maybe we did. A, I used to work at Fontenelle Music Venue with my buddy Carter Jackson. He was my boss. He was also my roommate, but. He drove a lull, which we can talk about that too. A forklift. Do you ever call it a lull? 
No. no I've never uh, he used to drive a lull. And part of our big part of our job was to build Porta John Island in the back, which is like 80 Porta Johns. We had to pick them up, carry them on the lull over there, arrange them. And that's what we did before every concert. Let's get Porta oh. John Island together. Yeah. You didn't have to clean them. We didn't have to pick them up afterwards. That was a, you need a specialist for that. Yeah. But we'd set up the empty ones. And you would have to do forklifts, like yeah. just like set them down. Carry them up on the lull yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to get out and touch them at all. I did. Well, we had to move them. We had yeah. to take them off and yeah. set them up. Yeah. Took hours, man. Yeah. I can imagine. I could see that. That's the job. I had jobs like that. It's a very, yeah, you're definitely not smarter than your audience with that kind of job. <laughs> like that's, I've done those jobs where you're, you're, it's like, they're like, we just can't teach an animal to do this or we would do that. <laughs> so that's a, my, most of my jobs were like, if we could train a gorilla to do it, <laughs> It'd be e- yeah, like we, we would, would have to pay. We would, <laughs> but it's like just you just do it. Yeah. You you'd be out of the way. I mean, I were you know recycling tires when I did that mm-hmm. job. It's like you're just like I don't we we just don't have a machine yet for yeah. this. So <laughs> we're just looking for just maybe the most uneducated person, just a warm body who's not <laughs> yeah who's not bringing anything to the world. No, I'll do it. You go. <laughs> You can do it in a cave. <laughs> All right, I got more examples where we can shift directions. Which way? What of like word, different phrases, things like that. Uh, Is there any other interesting? Or? <laughs> well, to me, but maybe yeah, not. To you. Do um, in the South we say y'all, like we'd say how y'all yeah. doing. Uh, rest of the country says how you guys doing. <laughs> in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, they say how you's doing, and in Pittsburgh. How Yin's doing? How Yin's? There we go. Trash can, garbage can. Uh, oh, trash can. I say waste receptacle. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think I say trash can. Most of the country says trash can. Pacific Northwest says garbage can. But I've heard garbage can. A lot. Garbage can. I've heard. Yeah, garbage can sounds better. I think we say the garbage has got to go out. Yeah. Like if you got to take it to the. We say take the trash out. Take the. Well, you take the trash out. Is your take the trash out? Is take the trash out from your house to the garbage can. That's true. And then you go take the garbage. The garbage has got to go out today. That means you got to roll the... Roll it up to the street. Roll up to the street. That's a good point. I agree with that. That's a big thing on neighborhood. Now that I'm in a neighborhood, and like the Facebook neighborhood, (laughs) there's always some debate about when the garbage trucks are coming around. Yeah. always some... Yeah. Um, Lightning bug or firefly? Lightning bug. Lightning bug. Yeah. Eastern half U.S. call it lightning bugs, and western half say fireflies. Firefly. Gross. Yeah. Uh, mud season. In New Englanders have a period between winter and spring, which is called mud season. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's where, as I'm, so that's when it's still cold, but the snow's melted and it's just gross. It's very muddy. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Do some of the other ones. The shifting gear. Yeah. All right. So we're also talking about some life hacks. Yeah. And oh, man. I thought of, I was trying to think of one. I thought of one for you. I feel like you have a bunch that you've shared with me over the years. Yeah. You're a little bit like Kramer in that regard. You've yeah. always got some yeah. something to do. One I thought of you was the Flat Stanley. Is that what it's called? No, uh, not Flat Stanley. Uh, uh, Lazy Susan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's like, him. he's married. That's his wife. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's Flat Stanley's wife is Lazy Susan. Beat his wife. Yeah. Yeah, I've got two Lazy Susans in my fridge. Oh, and tell us what you do with them. And I highly recommend. I put stuff on it, dude. Yeah, I got tired of digging, th- trying to find the right yeah. condiment, digging through yeah. it. Now I just spin that sucker around. Yeah. Won't you just leave your condiments out? Mm-hmm. Well, I could do that, but I'm a. Yeah. I'm Didn't a, you post a, that? You're a bit it, of a lazy Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you post it? and It got a ton of traction. Oh yeah, I got trash. A few people trash it. They said this is the laziest thing I've ever yeah. seen, and other people are like, "This is brilliant. I'm getting some." Yeah. Um, I recommend it, dude. It'll change the game, and Did it's a good just, conversation piece. Yeah, sending is yeah. Because when you have you have a lot of buddies, when y'all come over, y'all hang out at the fridge, and then <laughs> <laughs> walk in cooler. Yeah, y'all just end up. <laughs> where's Aaron at? You go. Him and his buddies are over. <laughs> the fridge is open. Just look at this. They're talking it. Starts beeping. They have to shut it and open it back up. You go. We got good in them three more minutes. <laughs> you go. 
<laughs> and you just spin it. Y'all just yeah. wander. <laughs> spin around. That'd dude. be a big man party. Y'all just end up all <laughs> just slowly end up. Next thing you know, your front door's open. You're just uh, all standing there like, feels good. <laughs> Uh, I could think a couple that drive handy. You told me one. I don't think you. Uh, why? How would conversation starter? I guess. Here's how it would go down. Yeah, Nate, you come over to my house. What's up, man? Thanks hey, for coming man. by. Can I get you something to drink? Yeah. All right. Let me. Oh, dude, look at this. Look what I did. I ever show you this? Oh, I've got. So now I got to follow you in the kitchen. <laughs> so I, I didn't. Now I got to. My kitchen's pretty close to the front yeah. door. Dude. Oh, <laughs> hey, come over here. Yeah. You want something to drink? Let me show you this. Come and show you some. This fridge is in the living room. Season. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how you peel a banana, which yeah. I think you may have Upside said on down. here, but, and tell us why. This is how the monkeys do it. And if they, you do it not by the, what is that? The, the stem, I guess. The stem. The handle. The handle. And you do it at the bottom, and that's how monkeys do it. And it's the easiest way to open. I haven't opened a banana the other way in forever. And it just goes, and it opens. You know, the other one, you would, it would sometimes break off or that. You just open it upside down. I haven't had many problems with the other way. I bet you've had more problems than you realize. Because, I mean, wouldn't the monkeys who, this is their world, then, you know, do it the way they do it. I've never tried it that way, but it seems like. It would be hard to get it started. Like it's not. It's uh. It's very easy, and you huh. just can you can squeeze it, and like it just it just goes, and yeah. it's the easiest thing ever. You squeeze it. You could do it. I mean, Laura, she can bring a banana up here, <coughs> uh, and I'm going to show you. Yeah, grab one out of the cabinet. Can you go ask her to. Just say. And the other thing is uh, that I remember you tell how you pack your clothes. Is not there a way in a suitcase that you can? They would always say roll them up. So you, if you roll your stuff, you wouldn't have to iron it. And uh, so if you, uh, like if you, if you even if you do a suit, one way I looked, one way to do a suit was you turn the suit inside out, put one sleeve inside the other sleeve and then roll the suit up. Oh. And then like, it takes up less space and then you have it rolled up. I had these one things I bought that were these zip packs and like you could just lay, like you'd have your things rolled up and they would all be in there. Now, me packing is a little different than most. I mean, especially now. Now we have a bus. I have like, because I have show clothes. So that stuff's all in hangers. And you got a closet on there. I got a closet like yeah. on the bus. And so when I pack, it's like I've started wearing like, you know, it's like I kind of wear athletic gear like, uh, like Viore. Like you wear, some, like I, I kind of wear that everywhere because it's like then that stuff doesn't get wrinkled. And then, you know, and I, I maybe I'll have one outfit if I got to go. And, you know, my life is not most people have to wear suits or stuff to work, but that's how I pack. One of the life hacks. I leave it packed too. I put a, uh, I put a, in my closet, we built like just this little thing to have three levels. And I have my top suitcases on the, is on the top shelf and it can stay open. And then my oh, other two suitcases. Man. So I have a bunch of different size suitcases. I have one that's guaranteed. It's going to fit in every, uh, carry on carry on well it may be if I, you're on one of the smaller you know like it could be a little i think you fit it sideways and then i have another one that's could that could fit in a if i'm on a regular plane it'll fit like in a carry-on and then uh and then i have a very and then i have a big one uh and so like that's the that's this the system but i always like leave it i have one two three I kind of leave it open. I mean, I, I kind of live in my suitcase. Like, I just, yeah. I don't really take everything out. Just kind of, you know, I'll, I'll take it out, I'll wash it, uh, and then, you know, I just, but I mean, it's helped wearing athletic stuff. It's like, kind of keeps everything a little more simple. Yeah. One of the life hacks it gave was instead of stacking your clothes in your drawers like this, mm -hmm. you could do it like that. So then you can see yeah. every piece of clothes. Yeah. Like, so not, don't go up, go sideways. Yeah. With it. Uh, so you're not digging around to see yeah. if something's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hang a lot of stuff. Uh, I hang. I mean, everything like t-shirts and stuff. T-shirts, golf shirts. Like, I could get like not wanting to, but it's like just kind of easy when it's hanging. You know. Oh, look what and we so, got here. Here's uh, Sister Abigail. So here's how. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, so this is how. 
We do it. So, in the monkey world, we would call baboons do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we, we even make fun of, in the monkey world, we make fun of baboons, and then we call humans baboons. Uh, and so you open it this way, and then you you just go. I mean, that's split because it was soft right there, but perfect banana. Uh, you eat that tip part? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't usually. But see, this already, okay. Yeah. All right. It's Seems already like, better. Seems like it's more work. <laughs> it wasn't. I mean, that's a perfect banana. After you broke off the thing at the top? No. You could eat that top. You could eat that top part. Oh, okay. All right. Um, can you pull up that? All these are from lifehack.org. Okay. Oh, yeah. So. Huh? Yeah, you can. I'm all right. I don't use my hands. People offer me napkins a lot. I, I got it. I just do this. I don't. I have a weird thing with napkins. Like what? I don't like them. I can. I'll use them. I like. Uh, I'd rather use a towel. I have like like the cotton, like cotton or like a napkin. Like if it around my teeth gets me like ugh, like I can't handle it. Yeah. And so I have a. We have, like at home, I have a towel. So if we ever have dinner over here, I will always have a towel and everybody else will have napkins. I can use napkins. If I go somewhere, I, I know how not to look like a wild animal. I can be appropriate and do it. But I, it's, it's, I can get very, like, I don't like, uh, like the fabric of a na- like napkin. Like it's like the paper, like I can picture okay. it. if it hits my teeth, I'm going to be yeah. like, uh, and so. What would, about a paper towel? Same thing? No, I would. I use paper towels, but if I mean if I start thinking about it, then it's like. But I, but I, I, I use paper towel. But I'm just wipe my hands off. If they're wet or something. Yeah, I can. I, I have to use napkins a lot because you're going to places that that's all they have. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if I go to a place and they have a cloth, the you know the cloth, cloth napkin, napkin. I mean, I'm thrilled. Uh-huh. I you're love it. Tuck it in. The no, neck. no. <laughs> but it always makes me way happier. I'd rather use a cloth than a paper napkin. But like the McDonald's. I could never hold a nap. My napkins never get crumbled. I fold mine. Mine always look kind of, I, I can't crumble one. That like gets me weird. And so like, uh, <laughs> I do it to not even, like Laura, do we do it where I don't really mention it to Harper because I don't want her to. Get the same way? Do this weird thing. I want her to give a shot at a normal life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's some life hacks. I didn't put all of them on there from this website. Tie a small piece of bright colored fabric to your luggage. Saves time at the airport when their luggage is coming out. That would be a very like person from Lebanon life hack. <laughs> like never been traveled before. You're like, this is like, I think they make suitcases that look a little different. <laughs> You're like, all right, I got one I heard the other day. Never heard it. Uh, put a piece of tape at the top of the... I think if you get the, this person's suitcase, too, that they're a picture of... Yeah. You're going to be the only one with that suitcase. It looks pretty beat up. Yeah, and you're you're like you don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Other people, most suitcases are black though. I I yeah I understand it. Mine are pretty. Mine looks pretty different. Yeah. Uh, but I mean I get the idea of it. I get the logic of it. I understand it. I think it's it's uh that's like someone that's. I think this travel stuff is like once you start traveling a lot, you're like it's not. You look at like how much time, how, I don't know. It's like how much you got to tie this thing on versus how much time are you really saving? How hectic is the getting the bags in your life that you're like, we got to streamline it or we're going to, you know, we're going to be be annoying at that carousel, man. It it, it can't, I know, but you're, you just, you just sit there when it comes out, you go, oh, that bet that's mine. I understand if you have one that looks like every other one, I could see tying a little something on there. Uh Like I, I understand it. Maybe you don't want someone to take yours. I've had someone take my bag before. I understand that. But like, this is all like when they talk about airplanes, like airlines losing bags. Like I know that happens, but you're like, when someone can put you like, don't quit acting like this happens. Every single time you travel, pretty rare. It's it's. I would think you. you, you I don't even know if it's once a year for an average person. I doubt it's even once. We a year. We talked about that on the travel episode. It's very small, and so people complain and like they just throw into like, well, I don't like. And so this, like, I understand. I understand this, but I'm just saying, if you're at, like, you could also go like, how much? If you really look at it and go, are you that upset at? That's why I started checking my bag a ton. Cause it's like, am I that, you know, people are like, I don't want to deal with the 
people down there. You're like, well, is it that crazy for you? If you really think, I travel every, I would travel every week. Yeah. Is it that crazy? Is it that much of a, now, I, now also I travel different times. That's my life hack is don't do this. It's try to travel. Don't try to fly out at 6 a.m. That would be my life hack for you. Uh, try to leave at even nine, 10. You, the difference of the amount of people you're around it's is crazy. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You got to think that's, that's my, my life hack on everything is kind of, I look at, I look at the situation. I look at lines and I look at, cause I can just, you watch people, people just, you know, we talked about that, that experience experiment, like where the people just get in line, people just mm-hmm. do stuff. If you're just a little aware, you shave off time all day long. Even you go look at the line for where people go to get for their bags. It's like maybe go right to where the thing opens. The people don't always go there. Sometimes they go to the middle. People mm-hmm. go like you know you can see people kind of they gradually go to one other place. Also, you go right up front, don't you? And stand. No, this is my biggest pet peeve. I, I never get as mad as I get when I'm waiting for my bag to come to the carousel and these animals storm the carousel. Yeah. And they get all the way up to it. And now everybody has to get up to it because you can't stand back and see yeah. your back. So you're just like, well, now I got to play this game that these idiots play. I got to stand up right by the carousel because everybody else is. And I want to be like, everybody, if you just back up, if everybody backs up 10 feet, yeah. we can all see it. And you don't have to work your way through this crowd. But I get with so the line, mad. Then the line is just at. The ten feet mark instead of up against it. But then you can all see you can all see it back yeah. there. If everybody's back, it's like you wouldn't go to a museum where everybody's walking through and looking at paintings. You wouldn't walk right up in front of the painting. Then nobody behind you can see. Yeah. Let's all back up a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll all be good. Yeah. I get so mad, dude. Yeah. I so what I would say, some of it is like you gotta think, I'm trying to avoid frustration. All that stuff is like when you get mad, you're trying to avoid the frustration. <clears throat> That's how I looked at everything. Uh, I would, when I travel, it's like, what can I do if I'm going to get frustrated? That's what's going to ruin my day. It's not the time. It's the frustration of the experience. Right. So like some of that will be like, well, I'll go stand at the end of the belt where there's not a soul and I'll just wait a little longer for my bag to come. Just to avoid. Just to avoid the chaos the mess of, of sque- squeezing and yes. fighting. Just yeah. go stand at the end. Yeah. And then be like, it's like, instead of trying to like you don't try to solve everybody's problems. You go, I'll just do a thing that no one, I don't think anybody else is doing. And then I go stand over there. You're the last one that, I mean, you just get it and be watch. You're, it's not like we're the act like we act like this time is like, these people are like, like they live, they're a day ahead of us because yeah. they got it. You're like, you're, you might even beat them. The, the hassle of even getting the bag out with everybody kind of jammed in, yeah. let everybody jam in. Right. If you just go look, everybody kind of in any situation, everybody kind of goes like that and goes together uh-huh. and they want to you know, a line to get food, a line to get any, everybody kind of does this. So if you just kind of look and go like, all right, let me just make sure it's not going to like, what's the least frustrating way to try to get my, whatever I'm trying to get. That's how. That's yeah. my. There's a life hack. Find the least frustrating way. When I first was going on the road with him, I mean, I was like, "You got to get this." You <laughs> well, gotta he's get not easy to travel. Wait, what was what was happening? I mean, you. He's never flown. It's not so when you when we first start going. You've. I mean, maybe twelve times you've been on the like. It. You got to realize it's. It would be frustrating when you do this every single week, and then you got someone that approaches an escalator like it's. Like it's just got invented yesterday, hmm. and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, he's getting on everything's like, how fast? Like it's going to like, like it's jerking. Like it's <laughs> yeah. not just a constant speed. It's like, well, I don't want to get it when it takes off, you know? And so it would be that, that would be, it was very hard. So yeah. it's hard for me to travel with some, because I have, so it's because it's like you have your system. You're like, I do my thing, I'll go stand here. I don't always go. Uh, you know, when everybody gets up to that line and everybody's going to board and everybody just goes crazy. Yeah, it's annoying when those people stand there. That's super close. But you stand back. You watch the chaos. Yeah. And then when it's your turn to go, I enter the chaos at my speed. And so I'm kind of like either the back of the chaos. Maybe I can even get in front of the chaos because the chaos can sometimes, <laughs> they're so chaotic that you can just go like another way because yeah. you're like, they're not even, no one's even paying attention to you. Uh-huh. This is, a, everybody's moment is like, this is the most craziest moment of my life is getting on this plane. And you just go like, I'm going to make it nice and easy. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm going to just go and just, you know. Right. It's like there's a little, like even when you're, I know they make you pay for seats and all this kind of stuff. Like when you're picking seats out, it was like, I would tell, always tell my wife, it's like, well, keep checking it. Like keep, if you want to move a seat and you're thinking about it, like keep, keep really checking it. Look at the price for real. Sometimes people don't want to do the large, you know, they just go, I want the cheapest one. I don't want to think, but let me go like, well, let's take a look at it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it honestly might be 50 bucks to get a first class flight. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not, but maybe. Try it. Maybe you don't, now you don't pay to check it back. Just look at it. Yeah. Does it hurt to look? You look at it. You go, I'm not going to. Are you looking at the trip and go, I want to be that? Is it that crazy? Is it that like, you know, you, you think about your time mm-hmm. and then you, you, you go off of that. Hmm? That's a good life hack. <clears throat> you feel, what do you, what do you find with, what do you find with being chaotic? Some stuff you're like, yeah, I want the cheapest thing uh-huh. and I'm, I welcome the chaos. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm paying for the chaos to save the money. Yeah. So I'm not mad at the, it's also how you enter the chaos, enter it, with like the, you get, I think, I know I do, so I don't know if everybody, but I get frustrated if something doesn't go the way I want it to go. But if I'm open to going any way and I don't know, yeah. and I'm almost excited that it could go any kind of crazy way, yeah. then I enjoy, then I can enjoy the experience. Mm-hmm. But if it's, if it, if I go, this ain't going what I, the, like, so I have to remind myself sometimes I would have to do this. I have to go, all right, this, I would do it with food. I always had a big problem, like too, like eating or me and Lark again fights where, I would be like, we were supposed to be going to do this, and now we're not eating there. We're eating this. And like, so it doesn't go the way I want it to go. And sometimes I would have to, so in it, in the mind would be as stupid as that. And I'd have to tell myself, like, all right, what if I don't get to do what I want to? And then I'm like, I don't really care. Yeah. And I'm because I don't really care. I just care about my, it's not happening the way I want it to. I don't care about what is happening. I care about me not getting to do what I want. So right. if I if I can look at it and go, you know what? I got to get there. That's like you talk about playing, like Henry's being nice with you at golf. I think I've been nice with you at golf. Like it's like, because I can go, you don't know how to play. Yep. You're not, I'm I'm okay. Like I enjoy helping. Like I don't. But if we go and we're playing and I'm like expecting, and you're like, yo, dude, this is not what it was supposed to be. Then it's like all bets are off. But yes. if I can go in and be like, yeah, hey, I don't know how to play. Okay. This was all in the brochure. Yeah. You, yeah, I, yeah. This is what I'm buying. Otherwise, I would just not play with you. And so, like, that's that's all you – like, I don't – it's not like I have to play with just good golfers. I just want to know what – you're just like, what am I – What am walking I walking into? into? Right. You know? Do you think you're easy to travel with? I think if you did what I told you to do, it would be. <laughs> but you but you think you're – like, who's – I travel all the time, and you don't. So you would understand the frustration – to be like, there's a system, like I'm doing this every weekend. And then I just, it's like walking with a child. <laughs> that's like, you know, like if you, people travel with kids, it gets hard because you're like, kids don't know how to like do. And you would, you know, the f- one flight you almost missed. Yep. Like that, I mean, that was like, you almost missed the gig because you go, the flight was delayed. And I, I was like, it doesn't matter. They can uh, drop of a dime, just change your flight back to the time it was supposed to be. And you stayed home. Like it was like. Like, it's like a concrete, like it's in concrete, can never change. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like seeing that to be like, if you almost missed the gig because you think, well, I'll just go back home, that's very frustrating because then maybe I have to do a show that night and I have to go do longer time because you have never heard of an airport and you think, (laughs) you're like, well, they they, they mailed a letter and it's in stone, it's written in stone, they can't change the flight back. And I'm like, that's not how it works. They can flip it just like that. If you feel like, if it feels like a day that where flights are being flipped, you can kind of fill it out. You can, you know, gauge it. But that one was, yeah, that was very frustrating. Counterpoint, Brian? Uh, he is not easy to travel with. And I make it pretty easy on you now. <laughs> you get on a bus and like, I would fly you first class. I mean, let's, let's act like <laughs> I'm throwing you in the back of a, I mean, my goodness. <laughs> No one's ever treated – I've been treated that as the opener. Just go like, hey, you want to fly first class with me? Do you want to sit in the bus? Do you want to get – like, how easy can it possibly be to be at the beginning? It's pretty easy. Flight to normal time. Flights are never 6 a.m. I know you were never getting up at 5 a.m. and going. We always leave at 11. Might have to pay a little extra for that, but I'd pay for your flight extra. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, go ahead. Tell me, how am I frustrating <laughs> – to travel with. I think that answers it. Does it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, he, I pay for his flight. Doesn't, he doesn't, he's never paid, you never paid for a flight with me. Yeah. That's yeah. unreal. 
I pay for every flight, hotel, all of it. Yeah. And I cover everybody. But yeah. But I guess I'm a little, <laughs> as you wander through an airport and you've been like, what is happening? Like we're, like we're moving across the country. Every day is like we're moving across the country. That's what I would say with you, traveling with you is like, it would be like the Oregon Trail every day. <laughs> we're flying to Pittsburgh for a night and it's like, you, I mean, it's like we're, like I said, we're moving to Pittsburgh. You're never going to see your family again. Get it all out. That's how I think you travel. I think you've gotten better, obviously, as you've flown more, right? Yeah. Yeah. I used to, when I first started, flew maybe once a year. I don't think I was that bad, but. You were that bad. You didn't show up that time. You just didn't show up. I mean, I made the flight. I mean, I think I had to call you or like I had it, like it was barely. Yes. Yes, that's true. Our flight got delayed, mm -hmm. and so I got to the airport later, and then another plane came in, I think, or yeah. something. And so, I mean, I, I barely made the flight. Did you have to run through the airport? I did. I have to run to the airport to get to the gate. So Yeah, so that's frustrating when your guy that you're with, is supposed to be with, is yeah. not there. That's, that's pretty frustrating to be like, it's the stress of like, now I got to make sure you get to this show. Uh -huh. Yeah. That I, stress is. I learned a lesson. I didn't. There you go. I didn't know that they might bring in another plane and your flight gets moved back up. So. Yeah. Yeah. They can do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I get the idea of not knowing, yeah. but that could have been maybe if I. It is when I know what I'm dealing with, but that's where I would. You would want to be like, well, I just want to fly separate. I mean, look, I I don't think I'm easy to fly with. I'm not bad to fly with, but it, when you travel every day. Every week, uh -huh. it's it's different. If you worked out every, if someone's a fitness person and they work out alone every time, and then I go work out with you, you're going to be annoyed that I don't know how to do everything you know how to do. Sure. Anybody on earth, it's not like I'm a bad person to travel with. This is any situation. You would be frustrated if you had your job at Channel Five and I come in and you got to show me how to do stuff. You're like, you do. Let me just do this. So we can. Everybody would be frustrated with that. Uh -huh. So when you get in your little bubble of like going, I travel, and you're like, yeah, I kind of just like to, I do this because I'm here every day. I don't, you know, it's 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 not. That's why sometimes when you would fly to go into like Orlando or something, you're like, it would be frustrating because you're on a plane with people that are on vacation, and so it's frustrating to be like everybody's taking pictures, everybody's doing this. It's like a party, and you're like, it's Thursday, dude. I just I just landed two days ago. And I got to fly out again. Is part you know. of you jealous of that that joy they still have? No, because they're just, not jaded. the way you, the no, because it's 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 just a different experience. I mean, I'm I travel, so I would there's stuff that I might enjoy that they would enjoy, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a different. It's just a different experience. But people that try, but I don't, you know, I've I fly, I bother, I try not to bother anybody. Yeah, I I try to not be seen. There you go. That's how I travel. Yeah. So yeah. I had to get frustrated with like, and I saw all this stuff like Laura will be like, she could sometimes not change seats, right? So I would I would lose my mind over this. So like if her and my mom and uh, our daughter Harper are flying and then she doesn't change, like they buy the ticket, they just get the seats wherever and they go, well, I'll just ask people to move. And I think a lot of people- Oh, instead of just getting them changed? I think yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people do that. They think, well, I'll just deal with it when I get on the plane. It's not that big of a deal. Or even if you're going Southwest where you got to get on the thing where you're like, well, if we want three to be together, it's like, well, I'll work out. Like, I'll just, you just ask and someone, and a lot of people will move in the sense, I fly once a year. Yeah, I don't know. I'll let you sit together. I don't care. Yeah. But then there's people that are flying like me that are flying every week. Well, that's very annoying. And I might even give in to what you're going to do just because I'm a, like, I'm not a, a maniac. Yeah. And I've, I've sat in the middle seat because these these two girls were like, can we sit next to each other? Then they had a middle seat. And like, what are you going to look them in the eyes and say no? Like, yeah. that's brutal. <laughs> that's so hard to do to look someone in the eyes and go, absolutely not. Are you insane? That's what you want to say. Are yeah. you crazy? You're not trading a fair thing. You're giving me a middle seat and like, just so you can, and now like, it's not fair. Uh -huh. And no one ever trades fair either. You can always see that too. When people do want to trade seats, mm -hmm. they never trade. They never they never give you the the better seat. Right. They never go like if you if they have two aisles or something like like I always think like if I'm going to have to do that. Sometimes you do like so if me and Travis or me and you were flying or something and we have different seats cuz I couldn't get them together mm -hmm. then at least have an aisle and a window. And so then you're giving the person to be like you're really not like unless they were like yo I got to I think I've seen one guy that's like 
you know, he's like got uh, uh, what's the uh, superstitious or something like, and wanted to fly in an oh. exact thing. Wow. I've actually seen that. Weird. But it's like whatever. Like that's what that's what it is. He's like you know. Then it, then you got the bad end of the draw. But usually you're gonna find something that's like, hey, I'm trading you the exact same. You can almost even sit in that seat. I've had that happen where they're like, hey, do you, I'm sitting here. Do you mind just sitting on that? Yeah. And you're like, yeah. I don't yeah who cares? I, that's the exact same seat. Right. So it's like, but people, I think people that don't fly a lot, I'll just figure it out when I get there. Well, you end up asking, that's not really fair. Yeah. And then it's like, that's what that, you're, you're, you're making people move around and you think, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't care. Like, you know, it's like, I look at that. And so then that's when I get, you know, so I, I'll get on Laura about like i mean we can get some fights about it because i'll be like you can't just go ask people to switch yeah that's not fair yeah you, you can't like we're just gonna sit i mean i almost like we're gonna sit separate on for on out of out of uh principle <laughs> yeah. yeah here's our, our one-year-old's gonna sit in a chair alone <laughs> just- to make a point that you should have just at once just either either like if someone wants an extra like if a big dude wants the exit row I always think then you got to buy the exit row. Yeah, yeah. You got to buy it, man. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's it's. I understand. You know, it's like a guy who walks on the plane. He's six six, but he gets in on Southwest. He lands at, uh, you know, he's on Road C or where he's in whatever yeah. boarding group D. Yeah, and it's like it's like, well, come on, man. I'm six six. You're like, then pay. You can go when you go to Southwest. You after you check in, you can go to the. Check in counter. I do it all the time. You pay $40. So yeah, it's it's 40 30, bucks. $30 sometimes. Yeah. yeah. $30 or $40, and you get moved up to A1 to 15 Right. And somewhere in that thing. And then maybe you can talk to one of them about switching into the s- Southwest thing. Maybe you could, but like $30, $40. Bucks. So either, either deal with it yeah. or, or pay. There's ways to try to figure out how to get to the get a little bit up sooner. Mm-hmm. You can do something, but I think people just get on. They go, "I'll just guilt." They don't care about guilting the person into it. Yeah, and I, th- I mean, you know, if I ever see a man, if I see a guy, he goes, "No," I'm always like, "I'm like jealous of that person." Like, how could you? Like, I, I would have given it to the guy. I would have been like, "Yeah, I guess you know, you're not even boarding. You're not even giving me an aisle seat now, dude. Yeah. Like, I don't even get anything. <laughs> I get something bad." A lot of people now Southwest buy the pre-board right, like ahead of time online. Yeah, I just flew Southwest and I was waiting. 24 hours ahead yeah. when you check in and clicked on it as soon as it happened. And it was, I was in like seat B40. Yeah. And I was like, there's no what, but they must have already pre bought, right? Yeah. A lot of them were like pre buying. You buy the like early, bird yeah. check-in. early bird yeah. check in. Early bird check in. Yeah. So they'll jump the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. yeah. you got to buy the, yeah. It's, I mean, it, it, Southwest is the hard part of Southwest too. A lot of people don't know. Only really one true exit row. If people want to go, I want to give a little, little life hack. If you go in Southwest, you, there's only one real exit row. And it's it's uh it's the three seats that are together, the seats on the left, the one with the uh, the really long you yeah. got you got the long seat in Southwest yeah, yeah, yeah. with no seat in front of you, the other seats around it are regular They're seats. Regular seats for sure. And you, I watch people sit in them all the time, and they have no idea. Yeah. And they think they go they they go to it first. If you want, I don't even like the really long one. I think it's like too long. It's like almost an odd amount of space. It's awkward. So. Uh, I, I always go to the exit row in Southwest, uh-huh. and uh, I go right to the – it depends on how long the flight. You can go to the window or the aisle, but I just go right to the exit row. And a good thing, too, sometimes in the exit row is uh, a lot of times the the flight attendant – we're telling everybody all this, but I mean the flight attendant will stand in your middle seat. There it is. There. And uh, in the exit row. So you go to that exit row, and you have her stand in that middle seat, and most people are not paying attention enough they just go, oh, and they don't, and you can end up getting an empty exit row seat just because mm-hmm. people are not paying attention. This is, this is all people yeah. not, a life hack is just yeah. pay attention. Right. If you just pay attention. I've seen people walk by the exit row just because the flight attendant is standing in the third row of the exit row, and they just think, oh, I guess she's sitting she's there. And they think, well, it's a flight attendant, so right. she's just, that's the, oh, that's the most space she has to stand in, so mm-hmm. that's why she stands there. Because there's no other exit rows, so they just people just walk by, yeah. and you end up seeing where like no one's in an exit row. Yeah, because you're like, well, they didn't they didn't pay attention, and that I mean, paying attention is everything. Just pay attention, you get through life easy. So I have a ton of these, and we've only read one. Yeah. So I can either keep going or no, I think yeah, I think I've did them all for everybody. Oh well, I feel like there's some fun ones maybe for a future episode. 
Yeah, yeah. We can do it again. Bank, yeah, sure. yeah, we'll do it but again. We'll stop now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I love talking about it. We would end up going on for another, each one yeah, for another. For, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, we'll do, so we're do uh, we're do another uh, we're do a life hack episode. Maybe we're doing one next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah record fine. one extra right now. So cool. maybe we're do another life hacks because I enjoy talking about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I th- that's what you know. That's what I bring to life. You're someone that is just. What? I mean, you're you're a cow on the like just boo, boo, look at the butt in front of you and just walk, 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 walk until it's your turn to be slaughtered. <laughs> and then you know, and I'm, I'm a cow that sticks his head up and goes, "Hey, I don't think we're going." Yeah, yeah. If we all turned and moved and went the other way, yeah, we there would go, go out. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Uh, April eighteenth, live Nate Land podcast yes. from Zanies. Live Nateland podcast. Mike Vecchione will be there with us. Oh wow! On yeah. the pod. On the pod. Nice. Oh, okay. He's, and Mike Vecchione's. We're, we haven't made a. It hasn't been a full full announcement on this yet, so I don't. But I'll tell you guys privately. Uh, <laughs> everybody be cool about it. <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> be cool. But we are. I am. Uh, uh, Nateland is. Uh, is going to be Nateland. The idea of it, hopefully, doing Nateland Productions, and uh, I'm producing uh, and directing Mike Vecchione's special. It's awesome, man. And. Uh, so it's gonna it's on April nineteenth. I think we do we're doing two shows. Uh, we haven't made a full full on a uh, big announcement. I will make a big announcement. Tickets are for sale. So if you do want to go, Vecchione's one of the funniest comedians. Uh, and you know it's like and he, you know Vecchione's always been a comic. Like I don't want this to be the real reason of like you know it's like if you like but if you if you're here for what I do for the the aspect of it being clean or the act of this not being heavy and not being whatever divisive or political like that kind of stuff is that's the idea that i want to make with stuff vecchio was basically already that a lot of his old stuff not everybody i was working with say what used to be clean mm-hmm. yeah. it doesn't really matter but what i want to end up being like well if nate lands on it then you can know that if you are if you like what i would do that i'm going to give you that yeah. and so i'll be able to give you i mean this is all new and you know but I'm so Nate. If Nate, Nate lands attached to it, it's like you will know. And like it's like I think with Vecchione is like we're giving you the comedy that's not. You know, sometimes a clean comedy can be. It's not a bad thing, but it can be corny. It can be. It can be labeled as all these other kind of things. Yeah. Where ours will not be labeled. It's not being about being labeled clean. It's just. It is. It's just trying to be funny, and we do it this way, which is just a different way. Right. We're just doing it a different way, and so we're not competing with the other people doing it the other way. Yeah. It's no difference to that. So Vecchione's got a special uh, together, that he, and he'll be able to do it like that, and it's it's going to be awesome. unreal. Vecchione's someone that deserves all of this, uh, someone I can get behind wholeheartedly. I started with him 20 years. I mean, it's there's not many better than him. No one's as fun as Danny. I mean, it's it's he's just a seasoned seasoned comedian, and it's uh, and so I want you to. Uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, you're hearing it now. We've not made it. I'm not like posted on social. I'm not going to be, po- I don't know when I'll be posting it, but the tickets are on sale for that. Uh, and I'll be my first special. I'm directing it. Uh, That's wow. awesome, man. So and what does that mean exactly? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got to Google how to direct a stand-up special. You got to get one of those chairs. I got to get one of those chairs. I mean, it's, I believe it's the shots. It's knowing like what to do and like that stuff. I mean, there's, we're doing it with. 800 pound gorilla as yeah, well. And like, awesome. so there's like, so they know how to do this kind of stuff. So I'm not going in blind. I'm going with a company that this is what they do. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I'm there, I'm relying on them a lot for the help, but I yeah. want to just start this kind of idea and this process to be like, I think stuff we can create eventually, you know, who knows, like eventually not only shows, movies, like whatever it can be is like to be, create this kind of thing that whatever you're here, the reason you're here is like, we just want to be able to give you that. And, uh, but I was not expect to make that big, you know. But that that yeah, don't. That's yeah, exciting, man. No one really say anything about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll keep it on the DL. Everybody that's listening, let's just be, let's keep it all between I think it's us. Part, that's during the Nashville Comedy Festival. That's during the Nashville Comedy Festival. Yeah. The Vecchio, you can buy the tickets for Vecchio and thing. Uh, but yeah, the Nate Land idea. It's the first time I've said it. Uh. Is uh, but that's the future and the idea with that. I'll have a much more. Announcement that might be probably the same kind of thing, <laughs> and I, it could be six months from. Now. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I should. That's my plan, but I'm telling you, you guys here in Nayland, y'all get to hear first. So just keep it between all of us. Uh, yeah, that's it. You have dates? Yes, this weekend, January 28th, 29th. I'm in Lowell, Arkansas, at the Grove 
Comedy Club. First time mm-hmm. headlining there. Oh. Pretty exciting. Good. So yeah. I'm going to be there. Uh, yeah, I think it's two shows. Come on out. I'd love to have people people come. Yeah, I'll be in uh, Indianapolis. If you listen to this on Wednesday, any of us, I believe it's tonight. Uh, Indianapolis and then Evansville, then two more Indianapolis and then St. Louis Great. and then Columbia, Missouri. And then a bunch more uh, dates are up. Go check them out. The shows have been fun. Go see everybody. Guys, we've, you guys have always been super supportive of us, and uh, none of that goes. We notice that. Uh, and we always notice that, and we can't thank you enough. You're the reason we're here. So uh, thank you, and we'll see you uh, next week. All right. Bye.